Hello. Welcome to the GSL season finals, everyone. Is it called the season finals in the GSL or no? It's not what you call it. Uh, no, this is just the GSL final day. Final. Okay. So it's the round of four, two round of fours actually. We have two semifinals into the final. Now these games have all been played. If you spoiler them in the chat, you will not just be banned, but Lambo will come and find you as well in real life. We have a private investigator on this. Um, and that's basically what we're going to do today. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Cast the finals, have some fun. Analyze the shit out of the, the Terrans and one Zerg that is still left. Yeah, I think I'm liking we're good it. To go. yeah. All right, Lambo. Are you ready for the first series, which is going to be Gumiho versus Dark? Absolutely. For me, the most exciting series, until I see that Dark wins, then the most exciting series will be the Grand Final. <laughs> so, so I hope, I, I, I'm personally really cheering for my man Dark here. Even though I like Gumio. I like it. Great. You're online as well somewhere, right? Um, I'm online, yeah. Okay, yep. cool. Cool, 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 cool. Sure, the sound levels are somewhat correct. Beautiful stuff. Are you ready for the first game of the GSL semifinals number one? Dark versus Gumiho. Lambo, give me an I. Let's I? go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's go is also fine. Oof. I'm actually kind of excited. It's been very difficult, though, to not read anything, not check any of the social media, because I wanted to have the freshest experience possible here for this GSL final day, Lambo. Let me tell you that. The freshest yep. day of all. All right. All right. In the bottom right spawning as our blue Terran player playing for no team currently, it is Gumiho. And his opponent in the top left is the red Zerg player. Dragon Phoenix Gaming, Dark. Actually, not quite Dragon Phoenix Gaming anymore, Lambo. Dragon Kaizy game. Yeah, I'm sorry. DKZ. But, uh, yeah, I, I just tried to do the Korean thing where the guy says the voice. Maybe they forgot to update it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> didn't have the budget for that. Yeah. <laughs> just like they didn't quite find the budget yet to remove the change. But I've heard that next season, perhaps, <laughs> they can hire the uh, <laughs> the guy that, that usually creates the images to remove the change. Because that has been freaking hell, hasn't it? That has been absolutely freaking hell. Um, we just get a standard hash first here coming out of dark. For the people not aware, Dragon Kaizy Gaming is the merger between Kaizy Gaming and Dragon Phoenix Gaming. Um, Dragon Phoenix Gaming wasn't happy. Oh my god, is this just an instant scout? This is an instant scout, yeah. He sent his first overlord there. Saw the barracks right away. This is at the very least, it's supposed to be a two Rex Reaper, and he still has one Rex at home. He's actually trying to finish this, and there's a. Oh, I, I, I thought maybe the SCV wouldn't be able to hit there, but I think you should have given up on it, to be honest. Now the SCV is gone. I don't think you sent another one. I think you just play one Rex Expand now. Wait, did he just cancel the barracks at home? Oh my god, he had both selected and pressed cancel, and I suppose both canceled at the same time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god, what a start! <laughs> There's no way. I just saw the minus 113 in the natural. I'm like, wait, this doesn't look right. Surely with a T Rex <laughs> Reaper, you can get that second barrack just a tiny bit faster. Oh, very frustrating here for our good friend Gumio, who is uh yeah, it's gonna be struggling in the first game here versus Dark. Dark's gonna be feeling pretty good about all of this. I'm so surprised by the way that Terrence continuously just proxy Rex Reaper on this map and put it in the same, not necessarily the same location. Very often we see it on the left of those minerals, but very often just in that general area at least. And it seems very easy to scout for the Zergs. Dark indeed scouted it as well, sent his Overlord there, and now is in an absolutely fabulous position. Uh, what are Gumiho's options here to make some type of comeback? It is Grassvan, it's a good camping map. Do you think we'll see some of that? Um, I think first of all he needs to get some stuff done. I don't think he can just camp from behind. He's also not the type of player to just play for late game in general. So maybe we'll see some special play with Hellions. Oh, you, we can already see double factory here. So it's going to be mech or at the very least uh, a cheeky cyclone opener. Hmm. Possibly blue flame, but I think it's most likely going to be cyclone from behind. 
and then just play like a like like it like basically a two base some type of build there or what's the plan mm -hmm. with this i think you just start playing hellion cyclone from two base and then add a third cc and then try to play a macro game with mech uh, but get, get a lot of pressure on the map deny overlord vision and start working at those queens and on the on the creep spread that's what the cyclones are much better at now yeah, Dark also checking around the map with two links, making sure there's no type of proxy starport anywhere for a potential Hellion drop. And, well, it is Gumiho, so maybe even a proxy battlecruiser is a possibility, although somewhat unlikely. Dark is playing some uh, magnificent Starcraft so far. Good scouting, good understanding of what it takes to win in these types of series as... Uh, yeah, this was a very good start. It's gonna probably end up losing this Overlord, although there's another pillar there, and Gumiho decided to fly that barracks back temporarily. I'm not so sure why. Speed is not close to finishing yet, so these Marines can continue moving on the map to try and snipe this Overlord in the middle, but this took a little bit longer than Gumiho had anticipated. Yeah, it did, and this also feels sketchy, because... <laughs> I mean, he, he doesn't know what's going on at all. There might be a Ling flat. Very often, if Dark gets a start like this, he just rolls Ravager Ling all ins. Mm -hmm. That's why we're seeing him make a tank, by the way, which is terrible for him. Uh, he's trying to be safe against everything. I think he should have just taken his chances and make more Hellions and try to get some worker damage on with the blue flame. Because if you're trying to be defensive here and the other guy all ins, you're already dead. Like, one tank is not even going to help you against a Ravager Ling all in. Uh, so. I, d I don't really like that one too much from Gumiho, but we'll see if he gets some, something done with the with the blue flame. He really needs a lot of worker kills to even out this this game. Yeah, he's gonna yeah, not not, not just five or six. We're we're really looking the you know at least double digits, probably 20, 25. Yeah. We're looking at a somewhat even game here. Third factory does go down, so it's going to be a straight up mech game. Um, but with that tank, there's gonna be so little map presence. It's also just kind of sad for Gumiho, like how hard he's probably hoping at this point that he's gonna get all in. You know, he has a lot of units at home. He has that tank semi-hidden as well. It's not sieged up yet. So if a Ling were to poke in the wall, the tank wouldn't shoot. I kind of like that move because that, that might trick, might have tricked Dark into committing more into an all-in if he already was doing one. You know, if he wanted to go for a minor pressure, then sees nothing there. It's like, okay, maybe I'll just uh, send it all the way, get more links. Instead, we see a Spire, and this is something that Dark has been doing so much as of late on Grassfun. Grassfun has been known in the past two, three months to provide a lot of late game scenarios in which it's very difficult for the Zerg to actually uh, win. And it's these aliens coming kill two drones. And as a result, a lot of Zerg players have started Spire, which allows them to kind of showcase their multitasking and perhaps make, make sure that the game doesn't go to a late game. And once again, we see that here out of dark, and this time with a massive lead. It isn't looking that hot for Gumiho. It is absolutely not, yeah. The Spire works out perfectly here. It's it's actually quite hard to play against it. He's going double Thor drop at the very least, which is decent if it arrives before the Mutas are out especially. I'm a little bit afraid that he's going to fly to the other side of the map and he's just going to get eaten alive by the Mutalis. Because Mutas against just two Thors actually should be able to win with good magic boxing. And Dark actually has very good micro. I think one of the, the things that he's very good at is, is his micro in general. So um, Even though he's not necessarily known for his Muta play, aside from the last two or three games I've seen him play on Grass Fun, I, I think this is looking very, very good for him. Yeah, I, li I like it as well. Really do like it. Don't forget that um, if the Thors do make their way across the map, there also will be links that can help out because there's most likely not going to be Hellions in the main base of Dark where this Thor drop might just be heading. There's going to be some cars though uh, in the middle of the map trying to deny some creep maybe, trying to go and get a couple more kills. I think the Mura just got spotted in the middle. Is yep. that true? Yes. Turret went down immediately here by Gumiho. Thor stayed at home. So this is actually kind of nice for, you know, build order wise. I think this is the best that he could have hoped for. Yeah, I agree. He, especially knowing where the Mutas are going is super important. Like, yeah, the Thor is in the perfect position. They deal no damage. Now he's actually moving across the map. I have no, I'm not sure about this one. Uh, I think Dark honestly didn't realize that it was Mech. So he stayed on a lower gas count. And just now he's adding the Roach Horn. He also went double upgrades instead of extra Mutas. Early on the bending run by late reaction there from Gumio gets nine SCVs. That's Dark for his uh, troubles. And yeah, I think usually if you play Ling Bane Muda against Mech, you want to stay, take eight gases right away. And also, you don't really need the Carapace upgrade since it doesn't do a whole lot for you. Um, aside from that, he still obviously was ahead, so even though this is a good build order for him, 
he doesn't really need to do anything with the Mures. Whereas usually if you play Mures against Mech, you really do need to deal some damage. But for now it at least looks playable for, for Gumio. I'm a little bit afraid he's overmaking Thor's though. Yeah, he's really expecting a higher Muta count. Well, it seems that Dark is just happy with staying on 10, 11, 12 Mutas or so. Using them as a harassment unit, maybe as a tool to control the Hellions around the map. More so than as a unit to try and end the game with clear turrets at a high pace with plus two uh, attack or anything of that sort. Fourth base is coming up for Gumiho. Adding a second factory as well at this point. Upgrades are running smoothly for him. So there's lots of Hellbats at home. I'm surprised we haven't seen a single sensor tower yet. If he truly believed it was going to be Mass Mura, surely a sensor tower would have been nice to have. Yeah, it would have been. Um, I think he just wanted to save the gas, I suppose. And also, he has so many Thors that he might not be all too worried about it. Hmm. He really just doesn't have many tanks. <laughs> he has two tanks, and he doesn't have extra ones in production. So that's his only AoE, apart from Hellions. And Dark is setting up for a big Roach Ravager Bane attack. So, I don't know. He needs a fantastic defensive engagement, Gumio does. Yeah, there's going to be a couple of Thors. They, of course, have pretty decent damage output. Tanks are in fine positions as well. Lynx coming in with a flank, though. Will take out those back two tanks. Great setup here out of Dark. The only thing really alive at this point are the Thors and the Hellbats. Nine SCVs have gone down already. Make that 14. Bio might end up connecting. More and more of these workers going down. And... Uh, despite Dark not necessarily being capable of getting a straight up kill here, I think he dealt enough damage and he's gonna keep on putting on pressure. Oh my god, do you see those piles? Yeah, fantastic bites. Even just forcing back the SCVs was so big, he got so many extra ones out of it. Kumio's doing his best with the Thor Micro. He's three 1 HP Thors, so that's a really good job by him. Dark even attacked without Roach Speed, he just realized, okay, my opponent just doesn't have that much, so now is the time to go. Gumio trying to repair his Thors, he has a lot of money in the bank. Oh, he loses one that he couldn't save anymore. Tank's getting some decent hits, but the tank dies and GG is caught. It's a 1-0 for Dark. Wow. What a show here, uh, Lambo. Uh, absolutely masterful uh, first game here when it comes to Dark. Just staying alive, making sure he gets in those good positions, and then continuing to kind of keep on the pressure, you know? Initially with those Mutas, yes, didn't get a whole lot done. Realizing that wasn't going to do anything, immediately switches into Roaches and sets up a, a wonderful engagement there. High level play. Very high level, high play. level play. Yeah. If you were to rate this game on a scale from 1 to 12, what would you give it, Lombo? So, on a scale from 1 to 12, I'd give it a, a 4, maybe. A four. But on for, for GSL levels, it's like a 7, I think. I think GSL games usually are... are uh, 7 out of 12, then, yeah? Yeah, yeah, 7 oh, out of 12. Gotcha. I think they're sometimes one-sided. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's true. I mean, this was a fairly one-sided game, but we almost had the hope that Gumiho potentially could come back, and that is also important, you know? I mean, to... To be entirely honest, it looked fine for him, but then if you if you look at it, he only has three factories and also he has zero tanks. Wait, wait, he had he had two initial tanks. I think the only thing that really saved him was that Dark thought it was Bio uh, for the first eight minutes of the game. Hmm. All right, game number two here uh, in this best of five series will be played on Royal Blood, and we see. <laughs> One very fast SCV going out, and a second SCV just chilling here in the natural. Also going out, but not, not that far, you know? Stays close to home, it's also important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, he's doing the same thing again. He was like, man, I didn't get to show it last time. Surely Dark won't scout the same position once again. Uh, is Surely. what Gumio is thinking here. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? <laughs> 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 it didn't work Just the first time. put it on time. the other side. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah, it is, it is the most obvious spot uh, to check first. Like, I, I am not entirely sure. Like, he's, he might be going for a double mind game, you know? Ooh. This is different, uh, though. I, this is double gas yeah. behind it. Mm -hmm. Which makes it even worse if it gets scouted. But to be fair, the last game also kind of was like it went, was just double gas because he also accidentally cancelled the barrier. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, except, except there there was no extra gas, so it was, <laughs> the factory yeah. also was late. Everything was just late. I guess it didn't really matter because of the barracks cancels. Yeah. Um, so, so what what would have been the plan here? I guess just a couple of reapers into Hellions. I guess that's still going to be the plan. This drone pool is definitely too late and isn't going to really achieve anything because of that. Yes, it gets scouted, but is there anything you do massively different here as Dark now that you're aware of it? Um. 
I think you usually you try to get speed ASAP, but I think he thought this either is a two rex or he can cancel the barracks, so he actually cancelled the gas. If this was a two rex reaper, this would be immensely annoying for Dark because he would never be able to take a third base, and even he he might start losing losing queen. So it's very lucky for him that this is only a single rex. Uh, now he doesn't really have a choice to do anything besides just making a couple of links and then drones and then extra queens, because uh, well he's he's gasless, so he can't. He can't get speed early, he can't get a third edge early. Gumiho attempted a bunker in the natural, then cancelled it the moment he went into the main base with the Reaper. I'm not entirely sure what triggered this, um, but the plan's definitely ready for a bunker. This Reaper almost in trouble, but Gumiho, with some nice maneuvering, does manage to get it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think it was just a fake, maybe tr hoping to uh, force a drone pull or something of those sorts, because one Reaper in a bunker, even two Reapers in a bunker, doesn't really do anything. Dark just takes a third archery. He realized there is no extra Reaper showing up. The two Reapers would have been way earlier if there was a second Rex at home. So he's going gasless three hatch, which is, I think, the best play he can do. But it might open himself up for the Reaper Hellion harass because it's going to be a lot of Reapers and Hellions. This is basically like a TVT opener mm -hmm. because it's it's double gas. It's an early factory. He's, he he continues to make Reapers one by one. So I wonder how he's going to defend the third base, because his first tumor wasn't at the front, which means there isn't going to be creep at that hatchery. If I was Gumio, I would just shoot the hatchery right now. But uh, he's actually trying to go for drones instead, which is also not a bad play. It's actually so big for him that he knows that there's no no speed, that he went into the main base with a reaper. No, he lost the reaper. That's, that's very unnecessary. Yeah, it's kind of a waste, of course. Reapers do get their uh, health back over time. He's diving real deep here, gets a drone, but is going to lose... Well, practically uh, everything. everything here. This was a, a major blunder here out of Gumiho. Oh, man, no. Lambo. This was I, awful. Oh, man. I actually like this position because I think he could have gotten the third base. Basically, always. If he just started shooting it. Because um, there, there was never going to be creep there. Like, if the queens run there, you can fight the queens of creep. You can grenade them away every single time. He had enough. He had, like, three Reapers at the very least, even after he lost one to grenade them back consistently while shooting the hatchery. He's now going into a into a battle cruiser and at the very least he starts the fusion core where the overlord isn't, so that's nice for him. But this still looks super suspicious. Like there's no there's no way around it. It's it's too gas. The cyborg is now building its own tech lab. There wasn't even a reactor yet on the factory. Like this to me looks so much like battle cruisers and Dark is quite smart so I think for him it does as well. Yeah, this, this isn't looking very great right now. It's pretty crazy because he actually didn't kill that much. He killed one drone and I think it was six links. Losing well, so far three Reapers and two cars. Like that is... I've seen people do that with a single Reaper, you know? The one drone, six links. I've had that happen to my Zerg before, Lambo, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't really see that with one Reaper, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> At the highest level, it isn't, it isn't that common, but... It's just below the highest level, around 5.3k MMR. This type of stuff happens on the daily against single reapers. I've seen it happen. Um, we have a very early spore crawler, so perhaps Dark not entirely sure on what it is and doesn't want to die to anything stupid. But I, I do believe that they were really, really early because it's not like Cloak could have finished yet at this point either. He's no, just going to no. be playing it safe because he knows his position is fantastic. Yeah, he's just so far ahead. The earliest that's could have been is if he cancelled the tech lab and made a liberator after the overlord died or he just made a liberator after the the tech lab but even for that it would have been too early so yeah dark just playing it super safe because he knows he has a hat basically also following up with roaches which is really good like this is this is such an obvious battle cruiser play from what he saw uh the only thing that he really needs to start doing is start some extra queens so it's easier for him to split up his queens and keep the mining time going yeah six is pretty low in the tvz matchup right very often yeah. we see seven. If battle cruisers are on the way, we see eight or nine. Um, yeah. Six is indeed very low. Spore also slightly out of position, more in an anti banshee position than anything. Queens are going to need to come and help out as Kumiho gets three kills and will now be pushed away by the remaining queens. At the same time, Hellion's trying to pop in here. Roaches were in an okay spot. Very nice drone split immediately here out of dark, who's going to end up losing a couple more workers and nets himself three hellion kills for it so not the end of the world but a bunch of roaches were built a bunch of drones went down i honestly think this is as well as gumio could have hoped for it to go right absolutely yeah that, that was really good for gumio 
But then once again, like we look at the supply now and it's like, okay, this this looks fine. You know, the Zerg isn't that far ahead in workers, but once again, Gumio didn't add any extra production. Like he has the extra barracks going down now. He's playing he won't, yeah, he won't he won't be able to move out. Like imagine how long it's gonna take for him to get stim and then combat shoots. I'm assuming he's just gonna use one tech lap on the barracks. He's gonna he's gonna have to combat shoots at ten minutes. Uh if Dark was to just do a 1 1 timing, he would have 1 1 roaches against Stim Marines without combat shields and without any upgrades. So he's still massively behind. Even though this was very good for him, he executed the attack quite nicely. It's just that if the early game goes like this, you need even more. He's really trying to sell that this is mech as well, right? Yeah. Like uh, the triple battle cruisers, Yamato being researched, only showing tanks. I guess the reactor on the barracks is somewhat suspicious, but then again, it's Gumio. He does a lot of weird things. I don't think Dark is going to read too much into that. Two battlecruisers now make their way across the map. Spire has finished up as five corruptors start. Queens get taken out here by the Yamatas immediately. As the Spore is uh, playing a game of catch the battlecruiser, which will most likely not succeed as it's the Spore that's going to get caught. They'll survive with a couple HP. Not that many Queens. Yeah. Only four, actually. Yeah, he has very little anti-air right now. Uh, ever since he lost those two Queens, especially if the BCs turn around, he will have been in some trouble because the Spore was one HP. He's now behind the main base of Dark. I wonder if Dark's trying to bunch up his Corruptors first, so he can maybe get a kill on the BC. He does not do so, but Gumio was very quick on the trigger anyway, so... Uh, he, he was never going to get anything there. And yeah, he's playing Road Traveler Corruptor now. He doesn't even have link speed. So Road Traveler Corruptor, theoretically, is really bad against against mech. Like, if you if you play Battlecruiser into Bio, this is basically what you want to trick the Zerg into doing. That's the only thing that the Battlecruiser into Bio is actually good at. If you force your opponent into a Spire and a Roach Warren, and then you just have Marine Tank, which obliterates it, hmm. unit composition-wise. Uh, the question is, if Dark actually attacks when he's maxed out, can Gumio defend that? Because no combat shield is so big against Roaches too. Against Banings, obviously, it's big, but in a straight-up fight against Roaches, it's also massive. Does it change the interaction of the amount of shots? I guess it's just yeah. one less shot, right? Yeah, it does. Okay, BC here, trying to get repaired, we'll need to teleport back, two Yamatos go down, that means that two Corruptors get taken out of the sky, and this is going to be the first time that Dark will be made aware of the fact that this is indeed Bio, he's going to be quite frustrated. If he would have peed on the Stim Tech Lab and gotten that, that would have been the, been the highest tier move I've seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's very difficult to know that at 9 minutes 30, this team is not done yet. Um, it, it's, it's a hard call to make, he's now, he's now going for the attack. He's even making more Corruptors still, so his, his ground army honestly isn't that good. Stim is now finished. Obviously, we were never going to see combat shields finish for this. The tanks are in decent position. He has a couple too many tanks towards the left, and the tank on the right is very exposed, I'm afraid, for Gumio. Uh, if he moves that one back, it will be quite good. He even has a bunker on the natural still. Five tanks, a bunker on the natural, three battlecruisers, and a bunch of marines. Let's see if he can make the hold. All right, here we go. Dark swarms in over here. Corruptors coming in first. Lynx helping out as well. Speed has finished. Oh, big repair here on a lot of these BCs. BC staying alive for a bit longer, but I guess the Corruptors have nothing better to do anyway. Ravagers are breaking through as tanks continue to fall. The Marine Force has been wiped out with only 12 Marines remaining. A high ground tank gets taken out as well. Uh, perhaps Gumiho can make a temporary hold, but I don't really see a future for him once the next 30 Roaches start marching across the map. Yeah, maybe if he would have gotten those Ravagers. Honestly, I think he did a good job at defending. Uh, he microed it quite, quite nicely. It was just always going to be so hard without combat shields. And Dark is also pretty rich. He's on 8 gas. He even has the money to start 2-2. And I think he's just going to go again. Uh, as, as you said, I mean, there were 30 Roaches in production. It's time for a wave two, and he cleared most of the tanks. It's just one tank left. The Marines finally do have combat shoots, but this time around he doesn't have as many tanks left. It's only one battle cruiser remaining, and the one tank is exposed, so it dies instantly to cross the pile. GG is called. A quick and easy 2 0 for Dark. Indeed. Very quick. Very easy as well. Both of yeah. those games, it felt, I kind of liked the plans of Gumiho and it almost felt like it worked out, but just because he was behind so far from the first three and a half minutes, it it had no chance of, of working anymore. Because I think the mind game afterwards, like kind of the fake mech, then going into bio, worked like a freaking charm. Yeah, if, if he does this and he actually has a decent early game, it, it's going to be so good for him. This seems I really mean, difficult in general for Zerk to deal with. Like, how, how do you scout this properly or how do you... Because well, uh, yeah, sorry. With Go an ahead. overs here. 
Well, uh -huh. usually you can just scout with an overseer, but you can also usually you poke with the lynx, and then if you see what uh, Darik saw, you also you also still think it's mech. So he did a, he did a really good job at selling it in general. But usually you just scout the gas timings with the zergling, and you see if there is marines in production or tanks and hellions. Especially hellions is usually a big call. Hmm. Yeah, it's nice to, uh, nice to see though that. Uh... Gumiho, in case StarCraft doesn't work out, has a, a great future in sales. Um, because Dark, mm -hmm. Dark was definitely sold on that, my friend. The Roaches, the Corruptors, this is not what you're going to have against the Marines and the Tanks. But it didn't matter as Dark is up 2-0 and we'll be heading onto Ancient Cistern here. Oh, it can be serious. <laughs> the last two times didn't work, but surely. <laughs> uh, this, is, this, is not an, this is not an entire proxy Lambo. This is a, a semi... -pro oh, and never mind. He just halted for a second. Yeah. Yeah, very odd. This is not even that much closer to the Zerg base. <laughs> He's like, I, but this time it won't get scouted for sure. Yeah, but this is like a normal Russian's map. Like if he's playing on Babylon or Dragon Scales, or Royal Blood even, and he just puts it in his natural, <laughs> I think that's <laughs> faster than what he's doing here. Or at least the same distance. Which makes this kind of redundant to, uh, to a certain degree. I mean, if... Derek was to drone scout, he could overreact or something, I guess. But yeah, this is this is weird to me. Yeah, uh, there's no second barracks either, so it's just going to be a single barracks. I guess he'll build a bunker and hope for a drone pool or something. Is that the play here? Mm, I guess so, yeah. I mean, I, I suppose he's going to play the, the very same build that he did last game. But no, single like, gas. Oh, right, it's single gas this time. Yeah, I was hope I was actually hoping to see the same build because I think the build order was fine until he sacked his units. Uh, but yeah, you're right. This time is basically just a one Rex Reaper expand, but the barracks won't be able to make an add-on for the factory, which is the big downside. And he lost some mining time, obviously, with the first SCV. Yeah, but then again, he also well, I guess he's scouting now, so kind of get a scout. Yeah, he's 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 trying to poke forward. He's definitely gonna build a bunker here. I think that's the only thing that makes any sense. No, he goes home. Okay, I have no clue what this is. Yeah, I mean, Dark's drones were already there uh, because the Overlord saw the SVs coming from an odd angle. So he thought it might be a proxy Rex. He now sees the Reaper. He's like, okay, this seems to be the same build once again. He pulls back into gas. He doesn't have early speed once again. So if this was the same build, it might have been good for him. Uh, but yeah, the Reaper won't really get anything done. This also isn't that much earlier than no, if it was like just in his seconds, natural. No? Usually it arrives at 22, now it arrives at 12. Uh, Queen yeah. pops out at 36, 35 usually, and Dark so far has lost absolutely nothing. So a uh, picture-perfect defense that definitely will come at a cost here for Gumio, who decided to build two Marines from the proxy barracks and might actually be capable of taking out this Overlord that Dark has sent in. Dark believed that this was a free scout, so maybe this was the play out of Gumiho, baiting out the OV scout. Dark's going to be walking into a massive supply block. He forgot his own Overlord anyway. Yeah, watch him throw an roach worm. This is what he always. Whenever he loses an overlord, he <laughs> just throws an roach. I, I've called this so many times, and I don't know why Korean Terrans don't realize this, but every single time he loses the overlord on the other side of the map because he either forgets about it or he just has marines coming with a lifted barracks, he just throws an roach worm. A hundred percent of the time, it's like. <laughs> I feel like if you're preparing for GSL, you should know this. So if I'm if I'm Gumiho right now. I'm making a blind tank and a blind bunker. Because if he doesn't, I'm really disappointed. And in a his planetary in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> planetary in the wall. This guy can suck it with his road challenge. He can build an eBay mate. Who needs a bunker? <laughs> if he does that, that would be the sickest play. <laughs> actually, it would be the sickest mining. I know he's not going to do it, but it would be so cool. Oh my god. It's going to be a tech lab on the barracks over here. We have two factories behind this. So, similar start to that uh, first game. The links are out. They're going to have a, a good old little poke. It, this is a fake stim then, isn't it? Yeah, it's a fake stim. It's it's, it's the same build we, we, we uh, saw in game one. Man, this is... Gumio showing some really cool builds. <laughs> Please make a tank. He can't make. He can't afford the tank because he fakes the stim. <laughs> <laughs> Not really like sad. this. <laughs> Not like this. Uh, without a bunker, without a tank, how, how doomed is this? Very. His, his wall's pretty strong, right? I mean, barracks plus plus orbital. No, don't lift it. Okay. I, he has to lift it to get his units back. Uh, so I hope he gets it down at the very least, the orbital. There's also one marine on the wrong side of things, and the tech lab is very exposed. 
Uh, the, Hel the Hellions are not not even on the right side of things. Uh, uh, he sees the. I mean, we we don't have the web. We don't we don't have the you know the player reactions here. But Gumio's head is tilting a hundred percent in this moment. It might be hitting his keyboard with his head. You know, just <laughs> bumping into it <laughs> Playing like a hard object. Uh, this is this is not looking great. So far, he's doing a good job picking off the Ling reinforcements though with those cars. It's floating a bit of cash as well. Tank is almost done on top of that. Dark can't really fit through. Barracks is being repaired. Gumio's doing a fantastic job here with the initial hold. Tank is out on the high ground as well. This honestly is one of the sickest holds I've seen in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. He still he still isn't completely clear yet because there's still links coming and there's enough ravages to just kill the tank. Once once the wall is forced to be lifted, he can still flood through. Now, if the Hellions once again intercept the Zerglings, that will be a, a great play. And their second tank is very close. Oh, I, that was such a good reposition with the barracks and the CC from Gumio. Great play there. Not all corrosive bites used at the same time, so the tank gets a lot of extra shots in. The Hellions start going down and the Zerglings are starting to overwhelm. It's not that much left from life, but it's just a little too much for Gumio. And we have a 3-0 on our hands. Ay, 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 ay. Lambo, Lambo, Lambo. A 3-0. Uh a beautiful attempt here. Honestly, some great repositioning with that barracks, with that command center. But it wasn't meant to be. As Dark takes the first semifinals and will set himself up in the finals, where he'll be waiting for the winner between Cure and Maru, which is, of course, the next match that we're going to be going into. What went wrong here? In your expert opinion, uh, you know, the entire series, what went wrong? Well, uh, it's easy to say build our choices since he got behind every single early game. To be honest, the last game he didn't even fall behind. It's, he actually would have been ahead if he just played a normal Banshee opener. It would have been so free. Like, if he knows, okay, this guy always makes a Roach Warren and just attacks whenever he loses his Overlord, you make a Bunker and a Banshee, 3cc, it's the freest win you've ever seen. Because you saw how much he struggled with killing that tech lab, right? Like what is he gonna do against a tank? It's not enough. It's not enough uh, burst damage hmm. to kill a a, a, a a bunker. Sorry, that that is being repaired, and then the banshee will slowly but surely clean up the units. So build other choices. I I have to say, it's a little bit unlucky, I guess, that he got scouted twice. But that's just preparation. Good preparation from Dark, I suppose, or bad preparation from Gumiho. No matter. Like like maybe he he saw that Dark never scouts there, but then as a Zerg, usually you think about okay. Where do you usually scout? Okay, I'm now gonna scout where I usually have my holes. Mm -hmm. uh, Dark is a quite quite a smart cookie, so that's probably what uh, what he was thinking. I I can imagine this being the thing that's going on in the in the preparation. Yeah, it was uh, it was a sad series for Gumiho. I mean, you know what actually pisses me off more is that he never really got to activate his plans. You know, you could see that he had some stupid stuff prepared. I bet he had five maps well prepared as well. And we only yeah. got to see three. I like the plans on all three maps. Then going down like this is the worst thing. This is sometimes I used to sometimes have like sick preparation against Saril. You know, it's like crazy <laughs> build orders. Then he would 12 pull me. <laughs> it's like, what? Why did you I do know. that? <laughs> it's like, that's I not know. okay. <laughs> You're so much better than me. You're not supposed to cheese me. That's my, that's, that's my rules. What the hell? Yeah. I would also always be sad when this happens because sometimes I give you nice strategies against uh, Cyril and then he randomly sends two overlords to the other side of the map and scouts it or goes to gas pull hatch and you just die to the random speed links and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, it's ridiculous. This guy's insane. All right. Um, well, we're going to go straight into this beautiful no breaks, nothing Lambo. You ready for Cure versus Maru? I'm ready. Let's run it. Let's run it. Yeah, exciting. How's your TVT these days? Feeling good about it? My TVT is non-existent. Well, I, uh, I I think it's better now than, than it was before because now it's more common to go a couple more Ravens and faster stim. None of that Viking crap because I really didn't like that one. Hmm. Yeah, me neither. Not a fan of the Vikings. All right, we have loaded into our first map here of a uh, very exciting TVT. In the bottom left spawning as our blue Protoss player. Blue Terran player, excuse me. If there was a Protoss in the GSL, that would have been great, but not quite the case. Blue Terran player, the bottom left, is going to be Cure. And his opponent in the top right. For onside, it's Maru. Very exciting. <clears throat> very, very exciting. 
Now, Maru has looked a little bit weaker in the TVT matchup as of late, and Cure has looked strong in every single matchup that exists in the past, yeah. <laughs> I want to say, two and a half months or so. So, a lot of people will look at this and think to themselves, well, Maru has a free win, but that's not quite the case. So, we see Cure opening up with, I think, a proxy Reaper here at 16 supply. So, that means we saw an SCV cut out of him to uh, be capable of building this barracks at this higher pace. This is a very good build order if the other Terran player is known to SCV scout, but not around the base. Just goes across the map for an SCV scout, sees that there's a barracks at home, and then maybe pops into the main base, sees that there's a two gas or whatever. It's like, okay, nothing weird here. I can go home. Um, I don't need to prepare a bunker. And then boom, second Reaper shows up. Life's going to be really difficult. Yeah, 100%. Uh, you try to catch the one Reaper with the two, try to overwhelm, and then usually it ends up being a cancel on the low ground command center. That, from that point on, you're just ahead. So that is the game plan. Obviously, there is the second depot, but this is normal with a two gas opener. Uh, you always make the second depot to deny the scout into the main base. So for Maru, this all, all looks very, very standard. So it, it really comes down to how he positions his Reaper. And if he scouts for it, he's actually scouting one location, just in case. But it's not the correct location with the SCV that's coming back home. He's now also scouting a secondary location with the Reaper, but still not the correct location. So this is how preparation usually is supposed to go. Not, <laughs> not the way uh, we saw it in the last series. Uh, the, the Reaper might actually see the barracks now on the way back, and that's huge. Because yeah. Kyrgyz will not be able to catch that one. And the CC is not popped down yet, even though there's 400 minerals. It's right before the SCV came home to throw down the CC, so this is very good for Maru. And once his second Reaper is out, he should be fine. Good first fight uh, for Cure. He needs to retreat now to keep the Reaper lead arrive. Oh, he's gonna jump in once more. Tries to maybe get a kill on that SCV. Now decides it ain't worth it. There's another Reaper arriving now. There's going to be the third and then number four will come out. By that time, however, there should be a Hellion out for Maru. So it's going to be one Marine, one Reaper, one Hellion versus four Reapers. Maru needs to be in the correct location to get that first shot off. And he's not at the edge there. That means this fight is going to be real tricky. It is 100%. The next Hellion and the next Marine are out soon. So Maru is trying to delay. It's at least one free SCV. And now I think Cure is backing out. Oh, he's at the Marine popped on the wrong side of things. The Hellion now is out as well, so Cure needs to retreat, but he's getting a lot of free damage done here. The resource lost already looking good for him. He also now has the army advantage, which means he can build a CC on the low ground. So even though it's actually later than his opponents, he can start building SCVs from it earlier than Maru can, and he can also start mining from it earlier than Maru can. Maru, fr fr from this point on, is contained for quite a while, actually, because he's also not outproducing him. Six Reaper jumping in towards the main, gonna get a lot of SCV kills here, some zoning grenades. Hellion comes in from Cure to flank, didn't quite end up working, but seven SCVs have gone down already. Hellion gets blasted here, one more Hellion might go down. Nine workers, two Hellions, and resources lost has gotten a bit closer, but a lot of those units lost their SCVs, that is painful. As long as Cure doesn't die in the next 35 seconds, I think he's in a fantastic position. And he has a Cyclone on the way, he has a full wall at home, and there's only a single Reaper here for Maru. The only thing that Maru can do is perhaps temporarily cancel the low ground CC. But that is it. I mean, even the Reaper run by, Cure is gonna get even more damage done. This is the perfect move because he can defend at home with the Cyclone, and now he can once again kill even more SCVs. Maru trying to go for this round, but good Reaper micro from Cure. The Banshee takes so long. The SCVs will just have to chase, and Maru really needs to deal some counter damage, but he just can't because the Cyclone is out, the CC even finished on the low ground, and things are going from bad to worse, or from, from worse to worse, as Cyril might say. As now the Banshee is finally out, seven more SCVs have fallen, and Cure is almost doubling the worker count of Maru. Yeah, and also the, the only thing that Maru really had in his playbook to try and come back, the, the Cloak Banshee, has been scouted already. Maru opts to go for the cancel on the Cloak as a result and follows it up with Raven. But this is obviously a great situation here for Curious. Mining from the low ground, has the double orbitals, is throwing down mules, can now start production for real. Has two Cyclones as well, so can even position those on top of one of those middle ramps to make sure that nothing is moving out. I'm loving this position here for Cure. I, I think if he stays alive for another minute, minute and a half, without taking any major damage, I, I don't see a way for Maru to win this game. Yeah. And I don't even <laughs> I don't even see a way for Maru to deal major damage, because he doesn't even have an army advantage. 
he, like Cure is set up with two Cyclones and a tank, and he even has a third Cyclone on the way, so he's playing it super safe. The Raven is out just in case there is Cloak. But uh, yeah, Maru's trying to move out now with his own double Cyclone army, but I really don't see how he's going to get some damage done here because Cure is in such a fantastic defensive position. Yeah, it's, it's difficult for me to see as well. And I, I think right, right now Maru is also realizing that he's going to try to poke forward here with a Banshee. That is not without risk, as there are a lot of Cyclones out. Gets a lock on on the Banshee. Barely doesn't die. At the same time, Maru returns to favor by locking on to the Raven. Raven, of course, can get repaired. Banshee will need to fly back home. So, uh, yeah, this, this push has no real power in it anymore. It's lost its teeth. And now we see the swap with the Starport to the Reactor. We're going to see a Viking base style here coming out of Cure. And what is Maru going to go for here? That's the, the next question, of course. Is it going to be more medevac based to try and keep some map control, maybe make some plays? Because if he goes for Viking Raven versus Viking Raven and you're this far behind, I don't really see a way for you to win any of those mid-game fights that are so important to establish your third base. I think Maru has to camp, to be honest. I think he needs constant tank production. I don't think he can even add extra barracks mm. too soon. I think he just he needs to go play tank Viking. It's, it's the best defensive. Uh, composition and it is the only thing that I think he can make a comeback with. Like I, I don't see him starting Stim and Medivax anytime soon. Uh, to be entirely honest. So oh, you think he just dies straight up then? Yeah, yeah, I, 100%. Okay. I think if the, the moment he foregoes extra Ooh. tanks and Vikings, yeah, he, Mech is also an option. Yeah, just camping defensively, I think is the only thing he can do actually. Yeah, so we see the second factory go down and. If that happens before Stim starts or before there's five barracks on the map, that usually is a pretty decent indicator that indeed it is going to be mech. Don't be fooled by the eBay that he's throwing down in the natural. That's a fake. He might use it to get turret range at some point, but nothing else is going to be uh, gotten out of that. Viking production indeed starting here for Maru. Cure still up about 30 supply. And uh, if you're the Cure fan, you should be very happy right now. He has fantastic infrastructure. It's going to go up to barracks four and five already. Uh, Maru's only on two factories, uh, didn't quite get the gas yet to get the third one. Uh, Cure is going to have complete map control for the next, I think, five minutes or so. It's going to have faster upgrades. Uh, tank count is still in favor of Cure as well. Has more Cyclones. The only thing he's down in is really Vikings and Ravens at the moment. Yep. Yeah, it is the only thing. But he has two Ravens that they're both full energy, so he can disable four tanks. And now... If four tanks are disabled, <laughs> there's not much left from Maru's army, so... Um, I think Maru needs to somehow prevent the Ravens from getting down their interference matrixes. And uh, the only way I can see that is if he gets a lucky lock-on with the Cyclones. Because he doesn't even have that many Vikings. Mm. I think if Cure scans this, he's just going in. He's gonna throw down the interference matrix and go in. Yep, there we go. Scan comes down. Interference matrix on the Ravens instead. What a cool play out of Maru saying, hey, if you can't use Interference Matrix on the Ravens, you can't really push in there. This might give him some more time to A, reposition his tanks, and B, to produce some more tanks. That's a really cool move. And it's going to buy at least a little bit of time as the eBay is going to get rebuilt here. As it does get I mean, taken that, out. Yeah, that, that was not only a cool move, that was a necessary move to stay alive. Uh, like, as I said, the moment the Interference Matrixes go down, he's dead. The Interference Matrixes now do go down. And I think he's dead. <laughs> so, I mean, he does he does actually disable two of Cure's tanks, but he just doesn't have anything left shooting. Oh. Kills both of the Ravens. Now, there's still a secondary army running towards his third base. The supplies are getting somewhat close, but I think that's deceiving because Maru's army is still just four tanks. He doesn't have anything mobile. So the moment he's out of position for anything, he's kind of dead. And the moment anything gets on top of his tanks, he's also dead because there is nothing to tank for them. Yeah. yeah, this side army really uh, changing the game. But for a second, it felt like that Maru stabilized there. Now this army comes in, takes out seven workers, forces a lift off. Maru, though, supply 103, cure 143, does have another army that he can start sending across the map. And behind this, th this is not some type of all in, right? Cure is not banking on this three base attack to kill his opponent. He was just poking, seeing if he could do anything. Um, and he has a fourth base behind this. He has 2 2 on the way. He's going to go up to eight barracks as well to continue pressuring his opponent. He can expand whenever he wants, wherever he wants, um, at any time. Like, this is this is painful. It is painful. But this is this is like the Maru magic. Maru is the only player that wins games like these sometimes. 
mass viking, mass raven, and then somehow the opponent just flies into some turrets, or it picks off a couple of medivacs for free. But now the triple drop into the main base, obviously Maru was super broke, so there can't be turrets everywhere, the vikings are forced to go into the main base. The tanks are forced to reposition, Kyr is also rallying his reinforcements across the map, and this might just be the final nail in the coffin of Maru, who now has to spread himself over all three bases, defending all sides because Cure is attacking everywhere right now. Yeah, this is this is painful. 84 workers for Cure against the 55 of Maru, who does have a fort base ready already. And if he can get back to gas mining, maybe he can stay alive for a little more. But it's starting to look worse and worse for our uh, yeah for 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 the onside Terran player here. Does have the Viking lead, which means he can push any amount of Ravens back. At the same time, Cure continues the aggression here towards the third base, drops on top of the tank, will clear a couple more SCVs as well, but Maru should be somewhat okay for the next five seconds. Yeah, I think if he wants to close out the game, maybe he doesn't need to try with single drops. I think just waiting till he's maxing and making a concave might be good enough at this point, because he's also going to have 2-2 by that time, and he's very Marauder heavy at this point. So I think going for a straight up fight with everything just from two sides or with a massive concave should be good. Maru at this point does have two turrets in the main. Those are the only turrets that he has. So the Vikings also are forced to still stay there because two, two turrets is not enough if he gets in there with three medivacs. And Cure already transitioning. Just in case this doesn't work, he can <laughs> go into a mass uh, Vikings and then eventually some Liberators as well. He's going to Doom drop the natural. I don't see any tanks ready there. Maru now realizing actually that there is a possibility of this happening and he's sieging two tanks in the perfect location. But oh, he might. Cure is just going into the main base, isn't he? Yeah, and I think there are some tanks in these medevacs as well this time around. That's going to make it a lot harder to clean up. Three tanks indeed do siege up. Vikings try to push it back. Get inter uh, sorry, get anti armor missile here as the armory gets blasted. There goes your vehicle plating level one, my dear friend. Medivac's in a bit of trouble at the same time. We have a triple drop heading in towards the third base. Not the greatest execution here out of Cure. is going to lose a lot of units without forcing the splash on the other tanks. I don't think it really matters though. Maru is massively supply blocked. He's not mining from the main base. While well, Cure's fifth base has finished at this point. Has started 3-3. Has plus two ship weapons coming in as well. And Cure has another massive army that can walk into the natural at any point. And right now, the natural is pretty much empty. There's one tank semi-covering it, but that's going to be about it. I mean, this feels very much so like the last series. <laughs> it's just not a fair fight as Cure takes it 1-0. Uh, back on, on the back of a really strong early game. G really yeah. good Reaper control. And even though it got scouted, he still managed to completely destroy Maru there, which was very impressive. But, but but don't get tricked there. Like the I think one of the hardest things against Maru is actually just winning a game in which you're ahead. Because Maru really has two modes. He either has the mode in which Maru is ahead and then he kills you within five minutes, or Maru is behind and then he drags the game out for thirty-eight minutes in which you eventually die. Like that these are the two I think most yeah. common scenarios that we see happening in GSL again and again and again. And Kira says, Yeah, not today. Uh, takes him out. Without any real issue, like this looked clean. Like he knew he was a hat, he knew how to use it. Kier's decision making, his army movement is always A tier. I've seen it so many times in his TVPs, now seeing it in his TVTs as well. He just understands what needs to be done from start to finish. Like that little move with the two Reaper, that two Reaper run by, he did as well as Maru started moving out. Like that secured him another seven kills, got the scout in as well. It's just sick game sense, in my opinion. Yeah, it basically ended the game. He, he made all the right moves in the last one. Yeah, as we're loading into map number two on Neo Humanity, starting in the bottom right hand side, it's for team onside Maru. And in the top left, as our blue Terran player up 1 0, it is Cure. So far, no SCVs out on the map yet. So we're gonna see a gas first coming out of Cure. Ooh. Now this is uh, has become much more uncommon. Even like back in the day, it used to be relatively common to go gas first, one rex expand, to then have very fast talions. I know Bunny used to play this very frequently, where he would just go fast reactor talions. But nowadays, if they one rex expand, it's usually still with a barracks first. So there is still some two gas builds, but for that he would need to take the second gas now. Since that's not the case, he is going for one of those one rex expands. So one of the 
greedier build against a two barracks play. Now, I'm not entirely sure how this matches up, but uh, usually, I mean, usually I would think it's good for the two racks player until you think about that his Hellions are actually going to be super fast if he actually goes reactor to Hellions. So then the question becomes, does he actually build a bunker at first? Because he will only have one Reaper at the beginning. Right. So he won't have any extra Marines. Now, it is going to get scouted here, and there will not be a full wall, I don't think. Or do you think you're just full walls to fake it? No, no, no way. Yeah, he, he's going to see that it's a one Rex expander, which means he's, he can just rally across the Reapers. <sighs> what was that? Then I guess he really wants to kill the SUV. Is that worth it? Maybe it makes it easier to deal with, like, the Reaper plus SCV. Yeah, because there's yeah. no SCV. It's the only thing I, I can really imagine. But if you I, have a high ground CC, there's no problem anyway. Yeah, I think he has to do it, actually. Because he he wouldn't be able to defend the low ground with this build, I guess. So now, at the very least, he does kill an SCV. Maru scouts everything. He knows exactly what's up. He abuses the map where you can block the Reaper path with only a single factory, which is a nice touch to his build order, I think. Yeah. So we have a second uh, Reaper here on the way for a cure. Maru, meanwhile, also getting a CC, is allowed to build it on the low ground. So Maru, of course, opened up with technically a single gas build as well. He's going to get it quite fast. A little bit faster than you would with a regular two gas build, despite having a second barracks. I think it's maybe like 12, 13 seconds quicker. Cure here, yeah. uh, wasn't quite sure what you want to do. You saw that? Yeah, he thought about building a reactor and then he was like, hold up. What if this is 2x Reaper? <laughs> and then he, he actually made a Marine now instead. He's now making a attack level. That, that, does that still block? No. Yeah, I, uh, I wouldn't think so. A little bit unlucky I with the positioning. If he would have spawned in the bottom, he could have made that tech lap while still keeping the block up. Yep. Maru pops in here, sees that there's one depot. Kyr's gonna counterattack with these two Reapers. That is a very wild move. I mean, Maru is making two add-ons right now. He has nothing at home. But if Maru goes in at the same time, Cure has only two Marines. I mean, the, the SCV is actually going to get killed right before the CC is done, which is huge. He's cancelling both add-ons, making two Marines and attacking on the other side of the map. If Cure's multitasking is good, he can kill so many workers with those Reapers. At the same time, Cure trying to defend. He's going to have a Cyclone out at some point, but four Reapers obviously kill workers faster than two Reapers. So complete mayhem here on Neo Humanity, where both players are killing their opponents as CVs. The thing is that Cure can now turn around and kill the two Marines. Possibly he decides to go for extra CVs instead. I think that was the wrong move as he gets surrounded and loses the two Reapers. In the end, they end up with the exact same worker count. Yeah, but if we look at the actual unit count that is still left, then I much prefer Cure's position here. He has a Medivac out, he has a Cyclone out, his CC is already floating to the low ground, which is already an... Or actually, wait. There's a, there's there's a, a third, third CC, though. Yeah, yes. I was looking at this from Mars, like, wait, his CC isn't done yet? And I realized it was his third. Never mind. <laughs> That's a really quick third, no? That is a really quick third, which means Cure is forced to deal damage now. Now, as you said, there's a Medivac with a Cyclone, which definitely should beat four Marines over time. But four Marines, at the very least, can delay a little bit. So I don't think this can deal drastic amounts of damage for now. As he pulls in a couple of extra SCVs. Oh, lifted the Cyclone a little bit too early. Also lost his Marine. Cure that is. So even though it's just four Marines, the tank is going to be out soon. And I think Cure won't be able to deal too much extra damage. So now he has the advantage of having an earlier 30cc. And already having a second barracks as well. So yeah, Cure with a slight army advantage. Also still with a worker advantage. But that's going to flip in the near future. Yeah, look at this though. We have a single tank and a single Viking moving across the map. As uh, the Cyclone turns around, starts fighting this Viking with a scan, will catch it, I think. Yep, there we go. Viking for a medevac. Okay, trade for Cure, who wants to siege up on this low ground position here. See if he can maybe snipe a mule or a couple of SCVs. Instead, we'll st start shutting away at this uh, orbital command for now. This is such a weird attack. This is the... This is, I think, the smallest army that I've ever seen take this position. Yeah, I mean, I've never seen anyone take this position, so it's not... That's like, <laughs> it's too <laughs> by default really for you, much. then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another true doesn't really say being, much for being me. Being dropped by Harstam. God, you love to see it. <laughs> here, here. Uh, he's going for Viking lip behind this. So I think he wants to continue pressuring or maybe just use it for harassment. 
has three Vikings out. Well, we see Maru only with a single Viking out. Is now going to swap the starport to the reactor. There's going to be an air lead for quite a while here. Um, and we also have, well, an even amount of tanks. I like this spot for Cure. Despite him being down a, a base for quite a while, he definitely still has some potential here to do things. Yeah, there's also no defensive cyclone, which is huge for those Vikings. Makes it so much easier to maneuver around. Maru sees what's happening. He's going all the way around. He's trying to attack the tanks with three unsieged tanks. I mean, the Vikings are out of position and the Vikings are not really firing. It, but this is terrible for Maru. How could he think that what? this is a good call? What? <laughs> GG. <laughs> what the... I don't understand that. There's no way he was ever going to win that fight. Even yeah. without the Vikings, this is not... I mean, he knows there's a Cyclone and two tanks. He has three unsieged tanks that need to run into the tanks. He has the it's... same amount of Marines, one less Cyclone, and there's two siege tanks versus three unsieged. He's a wild move. <laughs> yeah. It is a wild move. I mean, maybe he thought he was really far behind, or uh, maybe he thought... I don't, I'm not quite sure what was going on there. Very weird. Very, very weird, Lambo. But uh, that does put Cure here on match point as uh, so far two very one-sided series. The first one, I think some people might have expected, but I think this one, if it was going to be one-sided, people would have expected Maru to be much better. But Cure, man, this guy knows how to play the game. What can I say? Yeah. To be fair, I don't think anyone that watched recent StarCraft would have expected this to be one-sided because Cure has been kicking ass lately. Like, he, he actually... It has been playing really well, even performing better than Maru in uh, in a bunch of tournaments. Like in Africa Champions Cup, he was in the Grand Finals mm -hmm. against Cyril, obviously. He also played quite well in Sweden, where he got top 8. I think similar to Maru, right? So, Yeah, Ma who did Maru? Oh no, Maru lost Mar to Gunio, even in the knockout bracket. Yeah. If I recall correctly. All right. And that brings us to... Map number three here. It's spawning in the bottom left as our red Terran. Of course, it's Maru. Needs to make something happen in this game if he uh, ever wants to make something happen. And his opponent that just needs to keep the ball rolling. It's all looking good for him so far. It is Cure. Representing Team Envy, I suppose. I, I know they always walk around with the Team Envy jerseys, but theoretically they play for Abydos in the Team League. Yeah. But I, I think it's still Team Envy. Yeah, Team Envy is like a, a, a big friend group, it seems like. They're just proud to represent Envy and what it stands for. I don't quite know what it stands for, but they're proud to represent it. <laughs> it's the a only mindset. thing that truly matters. As long as they're having it's a good time. A mindset of uh, friendship and happiness. Exactly. Friendship cures all. It's going to be double gas here for both players starting, so no double, ba no double barracks shenanigans here. So far, whenever there was a double barracks in play, Cure ended up winning the game. I don't think that's quite a coincidence. We should definitely investigate <laughs> that. Um, but for now, double gas. And once again, Maru. Maru, he plays like he's afraid of losing, more so than he wants to win. You know, SCV scouting every single game. Cure doesn't give a crap about that. He wants the extra cash. Yeah. No, yeah, this is a massive helmet play style. Yeah. If you go two gas already, and then you go for the super early scout, this is not even after like this is not even after the barracks. It's in time for him to decide what uh, if it's an early proxy rex that he can have a very easy defense. I mean, <clears throat> it's difficult if you're down 2-0. You know you already lost against a, a proxy barracks. You already lost basically twice in the early game. I think the last game we can still count as a, a late early game win for Cure. Then uh, it becomes really hard, but he goes and gets himself behind because he gets once again trapped with the SCV, so he loses the mining time, then he loses the SCV on top of it, and they're, other than that, they're playing mirrored builds, which means he's pretty far behind now, as you can see in the mineral department, plus him having one less worker. Yeah. Awful stars here. Massive helmet plates, com helmet plates coming out of Maru, as, um, of course, things can still change up a little bit here, but so far both players, just with the double reapers, Hellion starts about five seconds faster here for Cure as well. Man, this is this is a disaster. Yeah, this is really bad. He, Cure is already also more saturated on the on the gas timings. Now the one good thing is that this is a really large map, so I don't think this small of an advantage will snowball into anything big. And in general, I think just playing super safe is a. You know, it means that he's still confident in the fact that he can just win in in a straight up game. He's like, okay, you got me twice now. But I, I really think if we just play a normal game, I can still be fine. So I think 
uh, it's it's a good sign for his mindset. Cure playing the most standard opener, by the way. Um, Maru doing it a little bit differently. He's actually going for a triple reaper, and he's not getting the widow mine. Yeah, I like how this matches up though for Cure. Having the mine there should be safe against everything. Scanner go, ooh, cheeky little medevac aggression coming out of the man that's up 2-0 right now. As uh, we're gonna see, I think a Raven rush for Maru. Mm -hmm. Could be Banshees, With but unlikely. We really hardly ever see Banshees unless the Terran is very far behind. Oh, well, technically he's down 2-0, so it still counts. <laughs> it counts. Great call from the Harsim here. Basically predicted the Banshee without even realizing he predicted the Banshee. So yeah, I, I, I think best case for Maru would have been if he just went for a Cyclone. Since Cure is gonna follow this up with a Cyclone and a Raven of his own, which already defends the Banshees, but still you can sneak around the Banshees and then hope to get some damage done while the opponent is out of position. He also has enough units against that single Madavec drop. I really don't think that should deal a whole lot against Triple Reaper 2 Hellions. Um, Maruna also taking the Watchtower, so it's one less Marine at home, but as I said, like this is enough units to deal with a single Madavec from Cure. Yeah, I think I'm not so worried about about Maru dealing with it as it might just scout the Banshee. I think he saw the Banshee. Yep, that's big. And also just killing these SCVs. Like if you can't kill uh, the Medevac, you, you might take out one or two Marines, but losing four SCVs is much, much worse here. This is a trade that Cure is very willing to make. Scouting the Banshee on top of that is freaking huge as well, because that was the potential for Maru to deal some damage himself. And once again, Cure just really far up in supply. Like this is, this is looking good. This is looking very good for him. I. I think this was uncharacteristic, honestly, a poor defense by Maru because he didn't pull the SCVs right away. I don't think you're supposed to, against six unstem marines, or even less, like four four marines, a reaper, and alien, uh, I don't think you're supposed to lose four uh, SCVs there, so... Maru not playing his absolute sharpest, he's getting banshee speed! Oh, no, no way, this is cool. Yeah, he's been dropped on the head, I think, before the GSL. <laughs> 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 this doesn't work. <laughs> this doesn't work. I think it looks exciting. I don't know. Yeah, very if it exciting. works, it's an entire yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when someone passes the ball to Messi and he starts doing like handstands instead of passing it, that's also very <laughs> exciting. But it probably doesn't mean there's something wrong with him. Like, is it, we we've never seen this before. It might be very good, but I I I'm, I'd be surprised if it is. Um, there's actually nothing in the main base here for cure exactly in the mineral line. That means that one or two workers may end up falling. Uh, Cyclone moves forward. Banshee? Well, barely. In the oh my god, no, what a range what? of death! Holy crap, my parents <laughs> complain what? about the Colossus. This is insane. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that actually looked insane. Well, that was from downtown, if I've ever seen a shot from downtown. Uh, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's terrible for Maru. Losing a Banshee there, while he's still producing Banshees, going for Banshee speed. The one good thing for him is that Cure is now less likely to make turrets. I think if the two Banshees survived, I think the chance is higher that he's trying to make a blind turret in the main base for later on. So maybe a blessing in disguise to a certain degree, but overall really looking bad so far. Yeah, I, well, Hyper Flight Rotors is about to finish up now. Uh, we're going into Mac. I am very curious what this is going to be. And I, I respect Maru's, uh, you know, strategic mind massively. So. We were joking earlier, but I, I mean, there has to be something here, right? He he must think that this is good, and he must have practiced it as well, and gotten good results with it. Otherwise, he wouldn't pull it out down 2-0 in the GSL semifinals. Yeah, I, I don't think he deviates from plans much. Uh, the, fir the first TVT that he lost, in, like he had a massive winning streak in TVTs, and then he tried something that Ryang told him was good, I believe, which was in late game. Usually, he would always crush the late games, basically, with a mass Viking Raven. And then he was like, okay, what if I just add a couple of ghosts? So he added a couple of ghosts and then actually lost <laughs> and just added to Bunny because of it. Even though it looked cool, it didn't work. The turret is there on both bases, so he can't really do much with the bench. He just gets a Cyclone, which is really nice. The Cyclone actually makes the would make the defense a lot easier, so this will also help him within the, within the future. Cure also going triple tech lab, so he's preparing to go for Marauders. Picks off a tank here as well. Dude's really nice damage. I mean, you, you can't forget that Banshees actually do outrange Marines. So without the Cyclone here, without any Vikings, he's getting so much done here with the Banshees. 
Yeah, that's the second tank that will end up falling at the same time. Eight Marine Drop with Stim is going to take out a bunch of workers in the main base of Maru. We'll also get the confirmation that this indeed is going to be Banshee Mech and not Banshee into Bio or something like that. That's a crap ton of workers that just went down and that pretty much evens up the actual worker count. Which surprises me. I guess that 3CC has not been doing anything for Cure. These Banshees are going absolutely berserk. What in the world? Yeah, those those Banshees were massive. There are four kids, eight, and another eight. So that's a shared 20 kids between those Banshees. And one Banshee already went down. So yeah, without the Vikings, without the Cyclone there, there was literally nothing that Cure could have done as long as Maru kept that mic ring. It was just basically free damage for Maru, who is this time actually quite well set up. He already has a lot of turrets. He still he still is going for mech, similar to the last game. But this time, like, how is Cure going to break this? He, there's not going to be Doom Drops into the main because there's going to be turrets everywhere. And even in the natural, he's starting to add turrets. And his tank count is really high this time. He has eight tanks uh, compared to the 15 Marines and five Marauders from Cure, so this is going to be way more difficult than last game, which he already struggled with breaking Maru. He's actually trying to go in, but there's so many more tanks than I think Cure realizes. The Banshees go around Cure's army to, to uh, get a couple of siege tanks. At the very least, Cure gets a, a Banshee or two, but yeah, he definitely cannot break this this time around. Oh, Maru chasing perhaps for a bit too far, loses one more Cyclone. Supply still very even, but Maru's fort base close to being done. His setup is still solid. Uh, I do feel like Maru lost a little bit of uh, his Banshee momentum there by losing, well, so far four total. So it must have been three in that fight, right? Um, yeah. That means that Cure perhaps might play a little bit more freely. There's also a reason why we haven't seen so much mech in this matchup. It's because, uh, well, I often feel like if the bio player... Uh, gets any type of momentum, it becomes really hard for the mech player to do anything. And that perhaps rings even more true on altitude, where it already is very difficult to take a fifth and a sixth base. I have a difficult time seeing Maru play a, a very proper late game going, reaching to six bases on this map. Yeah, he, you, you can always still go for a massive timing. It's a little bit hard to move out, but with that, that many turrets at home and planetary and good setup, I think it's possible. Uh, you could also go the, the Hellbat drop round eventually if you want to take straight up engagements um but yeah we, we will see eventually i just saw that the the benches don't two shot the SUVs because they have plus one armor i haven't seen that interaction in quite a while um <laughs> obviously because the terran SUVs are tanky as hell compared to the other workers in starcraft yes yes they are um sensor tower is uh, probably gonna get shelled down here by those siege tanks there's still three medifics on the top side as well waiting to deal some damage they tried to go in earlier but Tanks were in uh, good enough positions to stop that. Banshee's once again getting a tank kill here. And both Banshees will make it out alive. The Banshee Micro so far has been phenomenal here. Out of Maru gets to repair them once more as well. As he started his own Viking production. Um, and is very close to finishing up his own 1-1. You have a triple drop heading towards the main. This should not go through, right? Well, he, he, I think he can unload. Especially if he sends the Medivac with one unit in first. Which is what he should do. I mean, Medivacs are really fast. I think he's going to be able to, uh, to unload. Okay, he doesn't trust himself. He sees the turrets and he thinks, okay, there might be a tank. There actually was no tank there. This would have been hard to clean up uh, for Maru, but Cure didn't have a scan, so he didn't He didn't check. He didn't go for it. Now Maru can actually maybe intercept the job. Cure not paying attention at all. So this is going to get cleaned up for free, basically. Yeah. He wishes he went into the main base now. Maybe he could have cleared the armories or... Just taking out a bunch of SEVs, clear turrets for the future. Yeah, of course, he didn't know he's going to lose everything for free. Standing there a little bit too long, and Maru said, hey, I'm on cleanup duty. Cleans that drop and immediately starts unseaging absolutely everything and moves across the map. Has a Viking, well, equal Viking count. As Cure yeah, now has Thors. triple starport. Yeah, but he's making Thors already. This push is going to be with three Thors. So even if Cure gets the Viking lead and then he makes Liberators... Cure's army is looking tiny compared to Maru's. It's 14 siege tanks with 8 Hellbats, 3 Thors against what is basically 2 tanks and 12 Marauders. One of the tanks already dying to the Banshees, which still survive at the same time. Another free Viking pickoff. Maru's macroing this much better than Cure at this point. Yeah, Cure has a very high worker count, but his army not looking so strong. Only a single tank in position. Maru says, okay, I'll just move in. Banshees will take care of that tank. The Viking War will be won here by Cure, but does it really matter? Because the tanks are already shelling away at his third. Natural reinforcements can't get there anymore. There's a single tank, there's 10 Marauders and 4 Marines. 
that's not a very good sign here for our blue Terran player. Yep, he can maybe catch the two tanks on the right side, but he doesn't even look at it right now. He's in, <laughs> in complete panic mode trying to keep his units from donating in, but there's no way to break this aside from Liberators. But as I said before, there's three Thors, which means the four Liberators that he's producing right now without range are not even going to be enough to kill the Thors, I don't think. So I don't see how Cure is, is going to break this. And it's not like Maru is super all-in with it. He's still mining ha happily. Like, there's no counterattack. There's nothing going on for Cure in this game that makes me believe that this is ever going to be a good situation. He's now sieging the first Liberator, which dies for free against the Thor. And GG is called. Maru gets one step closer to making comeback happen. One step closer indeed. Cure, man, it felt so good for him until these Ben. I can't believe it's the Banshees that actually did it. Out of all the things that could have made the comeback in the game, we get the Hyperfly, the Rollers, Banshees. You know what's the greatest thing about all of this? Whenever something like this happens, every Terran player, no matter their rank, is going <laughs> to try this. So you know for the next five weeks, if you're going to be playing your off race as Terran, you already know that you're going to be fighting against Hyperflight Rollers Banshees. If you just open with a couple of Vikings, it's time for you to collect some MMR Lambo. Yeah, but I never make Vikings, so this is actually terrible for me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you have a Cyclone, you, you know that these guys are not going to have Maru's uh, mind. Uh, the build order factory? What What is this? Probably the, the wrong thing, but... But it said the right players. Okay, let's try again. I mean, yeah. Surely they I didn't actually send me the wrong replay. <laughs> they, they realized we were going to cast it just as a banter. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, this is it. we'll try our best. Let's just let's just see what happens. See what happens. I, I really doubt this is the correct game. Okay, it is. What? <laughs> Amazing. What, how did they manage to do that? It's a I trick. It's a bug. They removed the Colossus bug last night and they put in the <laughs> a different one. <laughs> Got to keep it even at some point. All right. Game number four here on Royal Blood. Top right spawning as our blue Terran player. It's, of course, Cure. And his opponent... Once known as the unbeatable TVT master, now he already has shed some uh, some, some blood already by by cure by his opponent. It is onside's Maru. Yeah, my chat already asking if they actually did remove the Colossus back or if he just gave them false hope. It's I, just false hope, isn't it? I have no clue. I just saw that there was maintenance scheduled for ah, six okay. hours, so they had six hours to fix the Colossus back in the mainframe. <laughs> I imagine a guy, you know, going in like underneath the servers with like a screwdriver. <laughs> like, where's the stupid Colossus? <laughs> Turning some screws around. <laughs> Did that fix it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Still 10 <time> range. <laughs> After six hours, he came out. Guys, the wrong room. This is World of Warcraft. Ah! <laughs> Unbelievable. I have no clue if they fixed that. I haven't checked yet, but they had I, I think it said from 1 a.m. CST to like 6 or something, the servers would be down. So surely something happened during that. No, it probably wasn't the Colossus back though. I think you're just on Hopium. Uh, it was probably just a, yeah, a direct hit on our replays once again, making sure that the replays don't work. <laughs> That's usually what happens during these. Timeless classic. All right, so Omaru once again playing the helmet build of two gas plus SCV scout. Cured this time around, going three Rex Reaper at home. What do you think about this? This is the build that um, Cure used to beat Spirit in Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2021. It was on the... No, 2022. It was on Curious Mind. Mm -hmm. I remember this because I then copied the build order when I played TVT against Spirit. I got very far ahead and then ended up losing. And then Spirit said, this build is garbage. <laughs> Despite all the <laughs> losing to it, there's someone that's 1500 MMR lower. <laughs> so I, I have very fond memories of this build. Uh, you go up to a very high Reaper count, have still a relatively good eco. You could get a, a third, you know, you could get a couple of extra CCs after. You have a lot of pressure with it. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fun build to play, that's for sure. And it's going to take out this first. SCV that was building the command center. It is a 
Reaper into Reactor, which I think is probably one of the best build orders that Maru could have hoped for here. Yeah, I, it is slightly worse at first because he obviously <coughs> now lost the SCB on the CC for free. Mm -hmm. But he's going to have three Reapers plus two Hellions earlier than he usually would have. So I think it's going to work out as long as he doesn't get caught. Good reaction time plus Grenade. He's going to lose a second SCB. But he at this point knows that it's through Rex Reaper and the two Reapers should spawn at the perfect time to even kill some Reapers of Cure. I'll lose this one more here, Maru that is, as well. Ooh, a really good micro from Cure. What a beast. He's got to go for the Hellion now as well, but he doesn't give a crap. Dives for another Reaper, takes out a couple of SCVs at the same time. I think this Hellion might end up falling too. How is this possible? He is floating 600 minerals behind it, so this micro comes at a price. And I, is this CC Toast? Four Reapers spawning, uh, but it's going to be four Reapers against two Reapers and a Hellion, so I, I believe it is, yeah. This is once again looking fantastic for Cure. What a video game. What a video game. He actually out micro Maru properly there. Uh, I think it's it's time to bust out the Banshee speed again, even though you were a hater last game. It's... <laughs> it's the cloak, Maru. You know there's going to be Ravens. Straight into the yeah. Hyperflight Roaders. <laughs> That would actually be sick. I hope he does it again. So, hey, it worked last time. Surely it's going to work another time. That's usually how builds work. If you can win with it once, you can win with it twice. As the Cloak is going to be on the way here, you have that CC going down on the high ground for Mario now. So not only is it delayed, it's also forced to be built on the high ground. Cure jumps in. I don't think he can fight this, but Cure has surprised me before so far. Does get a kill and pops out without really losing anything. So, yeah, once again, uh, an okay trade because he didn't lose anything and he killed something. I do believe that stopping Reaper production at this time would be wise, as he does cancel that final Reaper, gets the double tech lap as well as a reactor factory about to finish up. So he's going to be playing some type of 3-rex follow-up from this, I guess? He's Yeah, he has been floating so much money for hmm. a long time. I, like, I feel like he could have just made a third CC. He's still floating basically 400 minutes. Uh, that's yeah, that's the one thing I don't like. Oh, this time he has a really good position on Maru. He has a nice concave, gets a lot of units for free. Dude, the Banshee's not on Maru's side. I feel like Maru's just dead here. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the Banshee's still not out. I mean, there can be counter damage. Cure has zero anti air at home, by the way. So Maru is once again also going to deal damage, but obviously, seven Reapers on his side of the map are going to deal damage faster than the one Banshee on the other side, as you can repair against it as well to force always a third shot as well from the Banshee. Now the Banshee will clear this up eventually, but so many SCVs are falling here on Maru's side of the map. Yeah, 15 SCVs have gone down as the Reapers will get cleaned up. Banshee still going ham though on the other side as uh, that counter continues as well up to 10. Now 11, we get a scan. I don't think you're going to get the... No, he does get the Banshee. Wow, he should not have turned around there. It was it was one too many. Yeah. Stutter steps. Damn. That, that's really bad for, uh, for Maru. And it's this time around, it's not 3cc against 2cc, it's 2cc against 2cc. And Kira has three barracks already from his early game. So he has um, great production as well. Yeah, Reapers are getting caught on the left side by this Banshee, who has four kills. All of those going to be Reapers, of course. It's a worthwhile Banshee, if you ask me. Maru is going to try to push out, but he honestly hardly has anything. If this Cyclone is in position on the low ground before the tank sieges, I don't think that tank is ever going to siege. The Marine count is very high. Stim is still quite a bit away, so is combat. If the tank sieges, this might be annoying. Yeah, it might be. It might, it might force a small SCV pull. Oh, this is a good start of the fight for Maru. He gets a lock on, doesn't get the Banshee, and a bunch of free shots on the, on the Marines, which is really nice. The thing is, the tank doesn't really shoot at the SCVs, so this is... I mean, Cure doesn't need to go right away. The two Reapers once again with a counterattack at the perfect timing. Maru is just rallying all of his units across, so the two Reapers are going to deal more damage than the tank is doing on the other side because the tank is just shooting at a CC, which can always be repaired. Yep. We're going to see four or five workers most likely going down. Uh, three workers for now. Marine gets taken out. This depot is taking a beating at this point. CC actually falling really low. We're going to need to repair this at some point. Hello? Okay, Hello? He's, pay he's paying attention. You need to lift it as well. Oh my god! Ah. <laughs> Banshees and tanks both don't shoot up cure. Like, I'm not sure if you realize, but... He just needed to lift that, and with that CC being down... He still... I feel like he should have just pulled the SCVs at some point to go for it, no? He really wants to wait for a stim, and now he also has a disable, so I guess that's what he's waiting for. Like, he's one base now. Like, he looked at it, he was repairing it. He just thought there was less damage output, I guess. I guess the Banshee surprised him, but... 
Uh, he was looking. He also repaired, but it was just with like four SCVs. I mean, if he loses the series, he's gonna <laughs> be really angry at this certain moment. That, that was not a good move. You know what I almost think is the correct play here? I think pulling the boys. I think yeah. you just pull 20 SCVs and you pray to the Lord that you're going to be capable of winning with. And you're going to have your stim, you have plus one. Maybe you even wait for combat shield. Yeah, exactly. A yeah, I think with combat go. shield you can pull it. Wait yeah. for a second tank in combat shield and you just go. Yeah. Because this long distance mining egg. <laughs> yeah, this is ridiculous. I mean, it doesn't really do anything for you. Get a forward scan. I guess he does have the air lead for now, so he can try to pretend to poke for it. But two two Vikings already on the way for Maru as well, so that party is going to end soon. He might have two interference matrix by the time the boys arrive, but Cure's gonna try a macro game from here. I am not seeing this happen, uh, Lambo. Yeah, we will see how his position looks later on. Maru is still only on one 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 production, right? He doesn't have a third CC himself, so. To be honest, I feel like once the CC is done, it's going to look better for Cure than we think it, it does. I, I really, man, I really think if Cure was just mockering a bit better at the start, he also could have easily made a third CC. And then even now, it, he would still be in a fantastic position. But uh, as things are now, things are looking up for Maru, who's starting to focus fire down a reactor, which is very expensive for Cure right now. I think Cure should start a third CC for sure. At the very least, at this moment. Yeah. Ooh, these Banshees, they don't have the speed. So, yes, getting two reactors is fun, but having Banshees alive is also fun. And that's not... Oh! Do you see that shot dodge? But he saw the... He should have went for the full HP Banshee, no? Nah, he messed it up a little bit now. But yeah. maybe he can get it randomly with the Marines. Because that path that Mario is taking, I mean... Let's see if Kira actually looks at it. Nine kills on the other side. Most of that came from the tanks splashing on the SEVs. As an 8 marine drop does end up getting cleaned up. Cure still feels like he has map control, and I kind of feel that too, honestly. Stim and combat, yeah. as well as plus one, is going to be a powerful tool. If there's no siege drop position at the third yet, it's going to be quite difficult for Maru to move forward. Also, he's very afraid of losing stuff in his main, because there are medevacs out, so drops are always a possibility. Um, may maybe this isn't as bad for Cure as I thought it was. Maybe this, maybe, maybe you are right. Third yeah. CC now, we have the extra barracks coming in as well. I'd love to see plus one uh, infantry armor start and maybe get, get an armory down at some point as well. You know, continue uh, keeping that upgrade lead. I am very surprised Kira didn't make that third CC on location. Yeah. Because he has map, like, especially once he got the Banshees, which he, he caught them before he made the third CC. He had full map control once the Banshees were dead. Uh, he now does start the plus one armor. I mean, he, he still is ahead in production by quite a bit. The one thing that's looking bad for him is the Viking count. But both just have one Raven. Maru also has more siege tanks. But Cure obviously is going to have a Marine count lead. Not only now, but also for a very long time. I mean, even if they're going to max out. So as long as he stays in the center of the map, as long as he doesn't allow Maru to siege on his side of the map, I, I think he can do whatever he wants uh, with his army. Yeah, it does seem to be that way. So double eBay's have now finished up for Maru. So the upgrade uh, lead is going to disappear. Doesn't seem like an armory and second TV are quite on the way yet here for Cure. Third CC now morphing into an orbital as well as a couple of SCVs are waiting at the natural base position for something. Perhaps for that third base talent or maybe Cure is just uh, messing it up. Same time he sieges the main base. Will cancel the production of two of those barracks. And Vikings now being taken out. Raven will fall. And that's going to make attacks into tanks harder a little bit later on. And this might actually give... Uh, Maru, the, the little bit of a push to start moving towards the third base, you know, maybe try and get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Maru trying to secure his third. He now finds an uh, unprotected third base of Cure with the one Banshee that was still left alive. Banshee doesn't even have energy anymore, but should be able to escape, man. Banshees are quite fast even without the hyperflight. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Maru is also very attentive of them, making sure that the they don't accidentally die flying over some ground. Make sure to always have them in dead space. Oh, Just Cure actually went home for some reason. That's really bad for him. Like, if Maru ever sieges up on his side of the map, his army is going to beat Cure's 10 out of 10 times. Maru is very far behind in workers. He He's even stopped worker production. He's pretty much all in with this. He's trying to force the army engagement. Okay, Cure sieging up, trying to delay all of this. The Liberators siege forward, which means Cure needs to back out a little bit. Ooh. 
Vikings here trying to get the snipes on those lips. That would be big, but it's also not quite happening. Three tanks on Siege at the same time. I think they might just all end up dying. Medifact should come back to pick him up. One will fall. This is a very awkward position here for Cure. Sets up defensively in his natural. Tries to boost in there with the rest of his army as well. At the same time, going in for a counterattack. There's no tank in the natural of Maru. So these marines will be capable of dealing a lot of damage. There is a tank in the main base though. At the same time, Maru on the other side will break Cure's natural. So we have a semi-base trade here. Um, in which I don't think Cure's marines in Maru's base are going to survive for very long. Although right now they're still going. Once the stim runs out, there's no medevac healing. It's going to make matters... Uh, significantly worse for him at the same time cure in his own main base doesn't have enough to survive so he's losing at both fronts this maru has so many freaking tanks holy cow yeah Ma maru just has way too big of an army lead for cure to deal with this army ever like he needed to either counterattack with way more or try to delay maru more i think going back with his army was one of the biggest mistakes that i've seen cure do so far in this series because yeah there, there was absolutely no need to do so uh, he basically moved back for the one Benji with everything. And that cost him so much because Maru got across the map for basically free. And Cure also didn't micro the position up the ramp with the, with the siege tanks perfectly. Didn't unsiege them, so lost them against the Liberators. Didn't pick them up right away with the Medivacs. And then the counter attack was just not it. It was not enough. And at this point, Cure is dead. GG is called and Maru ties up the series from a pretty dire position as well. Impossible to win, technically, that position. Is, uh, yeah. I, I, if that CC doesn't go down, it's over. I think if you have a faster third CC, I don't want to say it's over, but it, it probably is over. There's so many things that I went wrong. This was very painful, Lambo. It was, yeah. I mean, that CC dying against... Two, it was two tanks and two banshees. It's, it's not like it was an insane amount of damage output, and it went on for a long time. So... Uh, yeah, it, it's cool to be calm and collected, but maybe maybe a little bit too too cool there from Cure. Just not paying attention too much. Yeah, this was, uh, it was actual pain. If, if I'm Cure in this situation, I would not be happy. Yeah, 100%. This, this is the kind of loss that also really stinks. Because now you lost all the momentum, it's on Maru's side now. And even though you were ahead, you still lost the last game, so... Let's see if we can recover mentally as we're loading in to the rubber match. Is it called the rubber match? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It's, it's game five between those two Terran legends. The two best Terran players in the world, I think it's fair to say, at this moment in time. Um, in the bottom right-hand side, we have uh, what is four-time, five-time GSL champion, maybe even the defending GSL champion. It is Maru. And in the top left as our blue Terran. Up 2-0. Now 2-2. Needs to win one more game to get to a finals. It is Cure. Ay, ay, ay. Poor guy. I feel bad for him. I think it might even be 6. Yeah, that, that's what I... He has a G5L trophy, right? Because that was a big deal. Yeah. And then... Did he win a 6 one? I have no idea. Yeah, I think on the last one as well. This guy's crazy. Yeah, yeah crazy good. He just doesn't lose in the GSL. She doesn't lose very much in general, but definitely not in the GSL. Both players opening up with a double gas. Maru once again with an SCV scout. What a guy. What we thought was a low tier move. Constantly scouting, making sure he's safe. It got him back into the series. Well, actually, it's the Banshees that got him back into the series. Let's face it. The, yeah, the scouts didn't do anything. I just want to say real quick. They did not do anything, but... <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it, it is a show of confidence, as I said before. I think it's good that it's a good sign that if you're down, you, you're still willing to sacrifice economy just to get into a, a macro game. But he definitely didn't get ahead with the scouting. He actually got behind on altitude, and the last game he also got behind. I mean, he didn't scout anything, he just saw a ball. Yeah. Cure pops in his hat, sees a Reaper in a factory, looks fairly standard. Maru pops in, sees a Reaper in a factory, yeah, it looks fairly standard. Both players, the exact same opener, so far. Might see some deviations here after the first Reaper pops, as that's usually the case. No. Second Reaper, look at these guys, man. They don't care. Yep. Very standard from both sides. Maru is mining a little bit more gas, actually, uh, than Cure. He left two in both geysers, whereas Cure is mining three and zero. I have no clue why Korean Terrans ever do this, but... Bian also didn't know that two and two was more efficient, so... There is that. Yeah. If you were a Reaper, 
whose hands would you want to be controlled by? You know, if you'd have one. Bion, Maru, Cure, Clem. I went Piotr. Because he goes, he doesn't even try to micro them, and he goes back home. And just keeps the it's Reaper the safest alive. life. Right. You, yes. you don't want honor. You just want to stay alive. Yeah, no, yeah. no way, man. I, <laughs> <laughs> like Clem, Clem and Diego, they kill the most Zerglings, but they also lose their Reapers the most. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would rather be a Piotr Reaper. He doesn't really 2-Rex, 3-Rex Reaper so much. Just goes across the map and then plays super safe with it. That's the kind of Reaper I want to be. Yeah, no Purple Heart for Lambo. It's just going to be staying at home, <laughs> taking <laughs> yeah. care of the family. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Very good. Okay, now if your goal was to get as many kills as possible, who would you pick then? Just Clem, Kalazur? No Bion? Yeah, Cl no, Cl Clem or Diego. I think Bion just makes more Reapers and then gets a lot of kills with them. So mm. if, if it's about one Reaper, I would say uh, Clem or Diego. If it's if, if there's a chance for like multi kills, I think Bion is the highest chance. Because yeah. they keep getting value always for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we have a cycle on the way here for Cure in the main base. As he uh, is also getting a quick, quick little tech lab. We have a medevac play. This is a, a fairly standard opener here. It's going to be a four marine drop with two reapers and a hellion and a tank. No, not just marines. I have. I never see this build do any damage, and Maru kept playing it against time and got behind because of it. So we'll we'll see if it does anything now because like the normal build is set up to deal with this completely fine because you have a cyclone out you're, you even have a raven out so usually just nothing happens he's actually just taking the straight up engagement trying to use the medevac for its micro but it doesn't really look like it it does a whole lot he actually does get the siege job okay this is also i mean he just shrunk down the auto turret so he forced some energy out he loses the tank i mean this is just not doing anything again i never see this do anything against any opener i don't know this is awful <laughs> Ooh, Cyclone fight. He's gonna lose that fight as well yeah. if he if he if he decides to go for it. Yeah, no, that was really bad. There's no, uh, there's no way around it. He lost everything and he killed two Reapers and three Marines. Yeah. Also, second Raven is going. Raven is going to be. Well, actually, he's not even gonna be entering the map anytime soon as Maru swaps over to build Vikings now. Probably because he's scared, right? Yeah. Yeah, he needs to survive. He he lost all of his tech units. His early tech units. So. He needs something, otherwise he, he, he's just going to get overrun by an extra Raven and an extra tank. Yeah, this is not it. 30 C is fairly late though for Cure, uh, who now yeah. started his own Vikings, has a second Raven on the way, is up a tank. It's a decent marine count, still has two Hellions and a Reaper as well added on. It did Cure win every single early game so far in this series. I believe so, yes. I think Cure played really well in the early games overall and just also had good builder matchups against what Maru had. He now sees the tank is exposed, not going for it. There was an interference matrix. I think he could have went for it, if I'm being entirely honest. Uh, there's one Marine scouting. I, I guess he wants to wait for the second tank, but this also means there's going to be two more Vikings, which is huge in the defense for Maru. So yeah, I mean, if this, if this game just keeps going and nothing happens, it's good for Maru. But Cure is spending all of his extra money on extra units. He doesn't throw on extra production like Maru is. Instead, he's just he, he starts tanks and Vikings instantly every single time, not saving any money for extra barracks. So he can use this as a method of a contain or even a straight up attack. I think it's a little bit too, too late for the straight up attack. I don't think his lead is big enough for that. But as long as he keeps up the Viking production, he can once again like set up similar to how he did last game to delay the third base ever landing of Maru while he's just mining from his own base now the cyclone should be a double kill yep they trade out for each other which i don't think either player really minds yeah if i can count just slightly higher for now for maru as he starts the reactors on his barracks and starts barracks four and five immediately as well two ebays have already started producing upgrades too so there's really still just a a bit of a window here in which it feels like cure should have more units and should have the control of this pace of the game while he's mining from his third base maru now sees that that third base is mining and i, I think that might he, he might feel a little bit pressured to try and take his own third as indeed we do see that orbital now starting to float over uh scans as well sees that there's a massive army there and lands it immediately once more. It's like, okay, I need to wait a little bit longer. I need to get more units out first before I can truly do something. 
I wonder how he's ever going to take that. I feel like maybe just taking the other one would have been the correct call because he has less tanks than his opponent and he's not going to overtake him in the Viking count either. He's making Medivex now, so I think he gave up on uh, winning that that war. Kuren now actually landing the Vikings in Maru's main base. Maru at the same time counterattacking with his Vikings and Ravens. Pretty sure he realized he can't do anything on his side of the map, so he's just moving over, which generally is a good call in StarCraft, but if this doesn't deal any damage, which I think it will because Cure is actually just running his units across the map, then Maru is in some trouble. Okay, one tank and five marines just spawned. Together with SCVs, surely that should be enough to defend. Two Vikings also just uh, spawned for, for Cure here in Cure's main base. Both the, the Raven of Maru dies instantly. The auto turrets deal great damage though. Cure is losing 25 SCVs already. <laughs> Dude, Maru is dealing so much damage, with my, which might force Cure to do an attack on Maru's side of the map, which is exactly what he's doing. Yeah, here come the auto turrets on the other side. Vikings taking out basically everything tank and maybe get one more shot in. That was very important as it killed one Viking and massively damaged another. At the same time, though, in Cure's base, Vikings still going absolutely berserk here. 33 workers for Cure against the 46 of Maru. Maru also already with 1-1 one, one on his Marines. Combat shield now done and has cleaned up everything in his own main base. Now can safely land his third, despite this looking real good for Cure for a very long time. It feels that with this move, Maru puts himself in a massive lead here. Yeah, it's crazy how a move that seems so random, but so logical, you know, from Maru. He can't take his third base. It was his only option to counterattack. He didn't have Medivac, so what does he counterattack with? The Ravens and the Vikings. If Cure didn't rally his units like if he had one more production cycle that he just left at home this would have been an easy w for cure as now maru is the one actually pushing on the other side of the map i mean maru is trying to interference matrix some of the tanks but maru saves all of them while still killing cure siege tanks once again a decent fight for maru who doesn't even need to deal any damage anymore because he's out mining his opponent he's ahead in upgrades he's ahead at this point in pretty much everything in this game so it's looking really good for him and he now even wants to doom drop he realizes there's no there's no vikings left for cure so he can't punish this at all and now cure is stuck with five siege tanks in his own main base good focus fire from maru making sure to kill that one of the tanks on the low ground of of cure and dude i think maru just made the reverse sweep happen i think so too 116 supply to 62 as cure struggling to Honestly, get his own production out in his main base. Barracks are falling left, right, and center. Meanwhile, uh, Maru is still producing behind all of this. He's getting his own armory. He wants to continue these upgrades, but he manages to get the GG out of Cure. And now the finals will be between Maru and Dark here in GSL Season 2 of 2023. What a show. Lambo, what a show. Dude, Maru didn't only come back from down, being down 0-2, but he came back in every game that he won. He was behind literally every single game significantly. It wasn't just that he was slightly behind. He actually was miles behind in some of the games that he still won. Um, the, the only one where he wasn't really that far behind in the entire series was Altitude. Every other game, I think he was in a very dire position. So crazy resilience that Maru showed here. And just the, the right moves at the right time. Very impressive. Very impressive. That's why Maru is Maru. And that's why we are sitting from home, casting the GSL replace Lambo. Um, I'm becoming very aware of the limitations of the human bladder. So I would recommend taking a small break. Mm -hmm. Three, four minutes, run some ads. We'll be back. Uh, let's call it five minutes even because I want to eat a little snack. Okay, five minutes even. You can get your little snack ready for the finals, which is going to be Maru versus Dark. And we'll be right back with more GSL action. Exciting. Ba -da -ba -ba. <sighs> it's on brand for Cure to choke. I'm not quite sure if that's true. Okay, I'll be right back. I also read out some donations. I saw I got quite a few. I'll go through all of them. I don't want to do it during the cast. You know, it's annoying. We'll also we'll upload it as a VOD, so that's why. Uh, but I'll, I'll after. I appreciate every single one of them. Mm, mm, mm.
All right. I muted temporarily on Lambo stream because he's also streaming this. Um, how do you see the fan funding? Okay, here we go. Holy crap. Crispy GT, thank you for the two Australian dollars. Thank you, Al Al Il, for the five euros. Thank you, Waka Flaka. Happy birthday, man. One drink on me, unless your country is giga expensive. Then I don't know. Let me know, maybe. Thank you for the 50 uh, Norwegian kroner. And then for another 50, after saying, okay, we do one more just to be sure, because drinks can be expensive. I appreciate that. Catbird Sis for the happy birthday, 65 Swedish kroner. As well as Alex for the five dollars. Saying happy birthday, Captain. Thanks so much. Warren Loving, thank you for the $10 as well. Much appreciate on those, guys. Really appreciate it. I will not be reading any of the the, the, the real chat, by the way, in case there's any spoilers there. I've uh, made sure to not get spoiled by anything. So unless some idiot pays cash to spoil me, then I will not be seeing it. And even that I will turn off during the finals. So, uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, for the people who weren't here earlier, uh, Lambo and I have been trying to cast some of the GSL games, but every single time either the replays came out too late or we were busy the next day. So we're like, yeah, we'll do the final day for sure. And it worked out perfectly to be together with my birthday. So that's really nice. Yeah, that's the great gift from the GSL to send the replays in time. So we're capable of doing this. Makes me happy. Love me. Hello, Lambo. I not there yet. So I have access through his cam through a different program, and he has access through to my cam through a different program as well. So that's why the quality of the cams isn't as high level as you usually see it. Like it's not. I mean, it's relatively. Hello, folks on my hand, you tomorrow. There you go. It's relatively crisp, but not quite as crisp because it's streaming to something else. Look at this, the dog. <laughs> Eat that. What a good boy, Lambo. Hello. Hello. I said, what a good boy. What a good... Uh, you saw the dog? Yeah, I saw the dog. I was watching. <laughs> Which one's this? Loki. Loki. Hi, dear. Okay, I sent you I, an invitation. Uh, I had a photo shoot with him this morning. A photo shoot? Yeah, for the dog, basically. But uh, I had to, I I woke up at like 3:30 to go to the mountains before <laughs> the other people would be there. So I'm I'm not I'm operating on less than three hours of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm gonna let the dog outside and then, but you can already start. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, indeed. In the bottom right, spawning as our red Terran player playing for on-site gaming. It is Maru. And his opponent, the best Zerg player in Korea. It's the blue Zerg player representing Dragon Kaizi Gaming. It is dark. I do kind of miss the crowd. I don't have a crowd button somewhere. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure we can add that for for next season of Lambo and Harrison Cast Oh my god, you actually... Yeah. Wait, how, how did I hear that? What? Yeah, it's crazy. It comes over my microphone. 
Oh, it comes over Discord, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the first time I managed to use this without it being very annoying. Usually I spam the air horns, but otherwise <laughs> <laughs> I never got to use it for anything that's somewhat useful. <laughs> that made me so happy. <laughs> All right, it's going to be a hatch first. Ooh, two racks, a little Reaper coming out of Maru. I think we can call this the Beyond build, right? It's 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 the Beyond build, basically, yeah. Uh, I actually am not sure if Beyond did this before Maru. I think Maru actually did it first. He actually used it in Atlanta, and I saw him use it against DRG, and DRG had no chance. And I didn't even see that many mistakes that DRG made. Uh, I, I knew because I was watching the replays afterwards. This was not a casted series. I just checked the replay pack, and it was a relatively early series. And I was praying that not a single Terran looks at this and copies it because it looked so strong. And yeah, it, it, it remained exactly like that. Maru was the only one, I think, that, that used it until Katowice. Mm -hmm. And then all the Terrans started using it because it's just such a strong build. Yeah, so, so what are the advantages of this compared to a regular Reaper expansion? Could you explain? So you get more Reapers early on. First of all, you don't need to scout. It is safe against literally everything. And trust me, I do mean everything. I tried every single thing that I could think of. Uh, and there is no blind counter to this. You can't punish the fact that they have a later factory because they have two barracks. And the wall on low ground just provides such a safety net for the Terran that even without scouting, they are safe against everything. And then on top of that, obviously, you have pressure against the Zurich, which makes it harder to defend the third base. You can get some damage done. And it's a little bit more difficult to scout later on because you have early marines as well on top of it. It just transitions nicely as well into just bio follow-ups. So there, there's a lot of advantages. The only disadvantage is that your second CC is a little bit later, but you have a lot of advantages um, in exchange for that. What type of damage needs to be done to kind of make up for that delayed CC? Or is just forcing out the early links uh, and delaying oh. the hatch good enough? That We do see a Reaper go down there for pretty much for free. Not great of a start. Killed one yeah. creep tumor, lost a reaper. It's not a trade you want to make as a Terran with this type of build. Especially creep tumor in the main base, because that, <laughs> that doesn't spread anywhere useful. So yeah, that, that was pretty bad for Maru. Um, you don't really need to deal any damage. Even just delaying that third hatch is already damage enough. Like Maru usually kills absolutely nothing. Like I played against him a bunch in the past. I played against him in Katowice, and I played against him once in Kung Fu Cup, and now I played against him in the Africa Champions Cup. And I think on average he kills maybe a couple of links. Like, I don't think he usually kills that much. Uh, so he he is comfortable with a scenario where he doesn't deal that much damage. It's it's more indirect damage, as you said. You force out a couple of extra Zerglings. You force out four Queens before the third hatchery because he can also play three wrecks. Like, there is a mind game where you don't, where you rush your third base very fast. Mm -hmm. So then it can stay alive against the three Reapers, but then you don't have speed. So if it's three wrecks Reaper, you are kind of dead against it. So there, there is a little bit of a mind game there. If Dark was to call that, he can get ahead this way, uh, but that's really the only way you can get ahead against the, the, the two Rex Reaper. We see double mine production here coming out of uh, coming out of Maru and a single Medivac. Usually you see the first two Medivacs starting at this point, no? Yes, yes, this is uncommon. I am assuming he's going to fake move out with the Marines and then drop with Widow Mines uh, in the main and the natural. Like. I'm not sure he actually can get four Widow Mines out before the Medivac is out. I think that's what he should wait for, and then he's going to do what I said. But, uh, yeah, it's not lining up perfectly. Yeah, it's not. Is there going to be an armory with this, or is not not much of a point against Zerg? Yeah, against Zerg, I don't think there's, there's much of a point, unless you want to go into Drilling Claws afterwards. But uh, I, for now, I don't think there's going to be an armory. Gotcha. Four mines indeed end up going into this medifact. As the Reapers clear the path, making sure there's no links around. It's very important that this does not get scouted. Dark does not get that information. This will be uh, blindsided just a little bit. He still has good vision around his base, though. And, I mean, Dark's response time usually is very good against this type of threat. So, I'm not super worried. We'll go in first position of Dark here for a sec. See how quickly he does end up seeing it. And how fast his response is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sees the medevac now. It is a very small dot on the minimap, as Prolos players sometimes complain about. He, there is no reaction at all. Now he pulls the drones, and this is somewhat in time, but seven drones is too much damage, honestly. He's not even going to get the, the Widow Mines. There's one more Widow Mine that Maru kept sneakily in his base, but he, he bore it a little bit too far away. So he's going to get maybe one score cancel for it. Yeah. Uh, so good micro there from Dark in the end. 
sloppy from Maro to let that Widowmind die, to be honest. He could have saved that one as well. But at the same time, he was loading up his double medevac drop. And, I mean, you, you can see why Turex Reaper is so strong. He has 3 CC, he has a 4 Widowmind drop, and now he still has double medevac stim drop, arriving at 6 minutes. Like, it's it's very difficult for Zerg to secure four bases against this and just stay in a good economic position. There are Umbro in the main base so Look, he just keeps going. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna this... die in... Oh, he's even, he's even gonna get the shot. Wow, I thought it would have died for sure. That's so annoying, dude. Holy crap. Now there's three medevacs with this push. It's gonna get a cancel on this first. Like you said, it's freaking hard to get a fourth base up with this. Uh, worker count is fairly close, but no fourth base. Six minutes and 33 seconds into the game. That is not a good look here for Dark. Three extra barracks are coming out right now for Maru, who's taking out a lot of creep as well. Mine burrows to back this up. 1-1 one, one finishes up soon. Big mine shot once again. These mines have paid for themselves dearly. Yeah. <laughs> Already, I think it's a very good spot for Maru, who has his third CC up. The one advantage that Dark has is that he was a little bit greedy. He went double upgrades before anything else. So he, he's not going to struggle with not having Baning Speed because there's no tank push. Like That's the one thing that you need Baning Speed for is, is a tank push. He's now catching a bunch of the reinforcements, not the cleanest lift up from Maru, so loses a couple of Marines there. But overall, it's looking really good for him. You can see one thing that's really difficult if you take this line third is that there's never going to be creep that is ahead of the fourth base location. So Dark, in order to combat this, this issue, he's trying to take both bases at the same time because as you can see here, you just don't see the Marines coming. Like, you didn't see the double medevac dro drop coming in advance. So once again, Maru gets a cancel. I hope he doesn't lift in the wrong medevac. Yeah, he waits for that medevac to die. Even gets a very good trade there still against the Zerglings. And it's looking quite good for him. But it, it's a little bit deceiving because the upgrades are really good for Dark. Yeah, Armory definitely a bit later. Infestation Pit going down right now for Dark. Fort base finally finishes. Got scanned by Maru. Sees that there were zero drones on it. That's got to inspire confidence here for the Terran player who's up uh, about 15, 16, 17 supply. And it's going for another push. This is a beautiful tank position as well. God, this is difficult to deal with. <laughs> I've never seen this tank position used either. Usually if the tank is there, game's already lost. But in <laughs> there's just no creep for Dark, so Maru can go this far. Dark now going for the full-on counterattack, which is his favorite move to do. Just defend at home with queens and a bunch of banelings. But Maru already has so many units once again back home, and at this point... The upgrade advantage of Dark is not kicking it in yet, so this is, was basically the perfect timing for Maru to have his reinforcements at home. And now Dark needs to clear this up. I mean, can he even still delay until his 2-2 is done? It's going to be done at some point in the near future, but until then, Maru is just trading for free. Yeah, it's going to be uh, 20 more seconds or so, 25 more seconds. Maru continues pushing. Did lose 13 workers to a bailing run by earlier, so that's why his worker count was so low. His army is still very large, though, as he starts moving towards the fourth base with the secondary army. There's a main army that is now actually pushing the main of Dark as well. That's where the two Evo chambers are, but the 2-2 two -two will finish. That is definitely going to help out. As we have another massive counterattack here for Dark. I think he's going to try to take out every single worker here on the third, while uh, at the same time evacuating his own fort base. He has rebuilt a fort base somewhere else. His main base is not really under siege at the moment. There's no tank on the high ground quite yet. We do have a massive marine drop in there. Um, and at the same time, yep, there go the SCVs in the natural of Maru. Or, well, the third SCVs that were trying to get into the natural of Maru, but there was a full wall, so didn't quite manage to get there. Another nasty tank position here. Supplies are getting closer, though, Lambo. Oh, bad. Okay, that, that was not a clean pickup from Maru, and he's losing somewhat uh, of a standing here at, at Dark's own third base. He's still trading decently, but that was not perfectly done by Maru for once, and Dark even borrowed four Banelings between the natural and the third base. The issue is that there's a tank right now, so you can't really unborrow to kill even more SCVs, but Dark is making some magic happen. Maru doesn't need to be this aggressive. It's a three-base Zerg playing Ling Bane. Uh, so I think he's being a little bit over aggressive. He gets a macro hatch now, which is honestly not a bad pickup since Dark is on a very low hatchery count with just pure Ling Bane. Now making a swarm host to compensate for <laughs> the little larva that he has, which is uh, a classic, honestly, in Dark's games. There's very a very frequent sight of uh, random swarm hosts that come in. Okay, the Marines are almost on top of the borrowed Banelings. Still. A lot of tanks here, which is not exactly what you want to have. Gets one tank actually with the borrowed banning, so cool unborrow there from uh, Dark. Yeah, no banes yet to help out in this case, but 2 2 versus 1 uh, 1 is always going to be a good fight, even for those links. Uh, if there's not enough medevacs and not a, a very big amount of marines. 
Ultra Cavern on the way. That could be a game changer. Yeah, especially with the upgrade advantage. I'm so surprised Maru didn't make a reactor on the second factory. I don't know why he's making tanks. I think making one, you can keep making one tank with a factory in the main base, but I think the second one should be producing Widow Mines. I think that's actually a blunder from him. Now, this base is obviously super hard to hold. That's why you usually never see it as a fort base, but <laughs> Maru was on the other two fort base locations for quite a while, which means it's the only chance that he has the... Okay, good lift off the depot. If those Zerglings get in, I think Maru is in big trouble. The one downside of uh, two Rex Reaper is that you don't have a secondary wall. I mean, you can still because... You can see there's a lot of random depots, but once those links get in, they're on top of the production. So Mario would need to turn around with literally everything that he has. And now they might actually get in, but that mi that might have been uh, good for Mario if he lets those in because his units were close by. But Mario needs to watch out more against these Zerglings. I feel like he's being quite sloppy on his reinforcements. Very frequently he loses tanks uh, to these counterattacks, which yeah. is something that the that, that Dark needs to stay in the game. I think if Mario was just there to max out and then attack, I think Dark's basically that already for the last three minutes if Maru ever decided to do that but Maru always moves out and Dark is so quick with his counter attacks he always micros them well as well so it's the one thing that is keeping Dark in this game here yeah Maru setting up once more for a big push we do have a link bane run by a couple of ultras now coming in with a flank here in the middle of the map there's one tank that's going to get taken out bunch of marines also dying Maru pulling ahead in supply by a significant amount at the same time, the natural now has been compromised as links with adrenal glands and two two upgrades are in there. Banelings will get the connections with the marines as there's two links uh, remaining. What's the ultra count still left? We have two ultras, we have eight banes, we have no more fort base where it used to be. Once again, we're going for that line fort base. Maru is kind of... Is he running out of time or is this okay? I think this is not okay. I think he needs to trade before 3-3 is done and... I mean, he's not in a he's not in a position that Dark needs to fight at. He can defend his main base, but he doesn't need to engage into the tanks, which means he can delay until the three three is done. And it's going to be three three chitinous plating ultras. The only thing that Maru has that is good against this is the liberators. He needs to uh, to work around the liberators. The marines are going to be terrible against them. He still does have the army supply lead, so don't get me wrong. This is definitely a winnable position. But the next time there is going to be damage on the counter attack, I think Maru is kind of dead because. He's never going to break Dark on his side of the map. Hmm. Yeah, that uh, Carapace level 3 finishing like two and a half seconds before the Evo dies is a little bit unfortunate for Maru. Ten workers going down somewhere. I didn't quite catch. Oh, it's the Liberator taking out... Well, no, just one worker. Where did the other go down? I guess in the main in base. In the main base. In the main yeah. base. In the main base. Lip sieging in the main is also definitely helping against these ultras. Tanks on the low ground being real useful too. We do have that counter attack set up, but as long as Maru doesn't move out, that counter attack can't really go into a liberator and siege that position. 3 3 now starting. We do have three tech labs on the way on already existing barracks. So rather than building new barracks, he says, hey, I'm just going to swap these, start building marauders. We have four marauders at a time. And if we get to a decent marauder count, I can see Maru winning a fight again. Yeah, Maru can also lift his main base, and I think he should pretty soon. Uh, one thing that is really cute is that Dark has a borrowed link where the rewall is on Maru's natural, so uh, that sets him up for a good counterattack once Maru decides to move out. But I think Maru has finally realized that moving out is not the right play against this. And Dark is now going for the clear up, but obviously there's no mobile anti air, so Maru can save most of those units. Loses the Liberator, which is huge, by the way. And Maru finally also deciding to go into those Widow Mines and the Ghost Academy, which I think is the correct call. Because he can use the gas for, for something, like for anything. He, he He's not even mining the gas yet, but I think he should, because he's just oversaturated for now. So I think getting a Ghost Academy to have something to spend the gas on is really good. Yeah, we finally also have two Vipers on the way. I feel like they've been... Uh, they're kind of long overdue already. They would have been helpful earlier in parasitic bombing, maybe even blinding, clouding that position near the main base. So we now have a massive dropout, uh, or massive... Uh, uh, load up here which is going to drop in towards the main base is a hive snipe going to be very impactful here not as impactful because there is nothing else in the main base like if he snipes the ultra then and the vipers then the high the, the hive snipe would be huge because it's going to take forever to get that back but the vipers are not in the main nor is the ultra cavern so i think this is fine for dyke should already rebuild the spawning pool though losing that is going to be quite annoying Pathogen Glance starting now as well, as we see Dark really moving into a bit more of a sophisticated army composition, better than the Caveman Ling, Ling Bane Ultra type of style, just A moving around. 
It's gonna have, need multiple control groups here, but Dark is an absolute master at that. Queen's going ham with the transfuses as these ultras are doing a good job with the cleanup so far. There's no overs here to help against these mines though, which means that uh, one or two of these mines might shoot again later on in the game. He actually has zero overs here and he doesn't have a lair, I oh. just realized. So <laughs> these Villa mines are not gonna be cleared up unless he goes there with spore crawlers. Uh, obviously, Maru can't know that, so he can't attack right now with Widow Mines, but that will be very difficult for Dyke to clean up. Like, just, not even attack with everything, but just move out with the Widow Mines and keep using that position. Hmm. Dark is, uh, Maru is now moving out with everything, and this base, I think the best play for Dyke is to just mass counterattack and ignore this position. Just give up this base and say, hey, I'm gonna kill your third base. That's indeed what he's doing. Three ultras on the left side base. A lot of links and Banes moving towards the right side. What was used to call the third base. And probably still is the third base. Um, this was an okay trade here, I think, for uh, for Dark. He's gonna probably give up this base at this point. Needs to evacuate those drones, though. And needs to do it very quickly. Marines are now in the position when they can start shooting them. Liberator still giving some backup as well. Ultras have taken out so many SCVs, and there's a lot of cash in the bank here for Dark. Yeah, if if this was to go for a head-on army engagement, I think Maru wins this always. But Dark is so good about never engaging the army when it's all together. He's picking off a tank here, and then he's disengaging once again with the Ultras, just running away. And he didn't even lose the base yet. I really think he should not suck that base, by the way. I, I'm always a fan of... Uh, you know, consuming the forward hatcheries because that's just convenient, but I think this hatchery is probably not the one that you want to get the HP from. As Dark once again is going for the counterattack, he's playing it so nicely. He's just never taking the head-on army engagement and just try to get the counterattack damage done. Also trade that way, you know? Keep out mining your opponent. This is the best way he's ever going to get the, the, the trades. Try to get Maru to not have a full-on army engagement. I mean, Maru's army is looking so strong that whenever he does actually force the final engagement, I think he can still win the game, though. Yeah, it does look scary. I'm loving these little burrows around the natural, by the way. Uh, we do see two Ultras that went down on the other side of the map. Maru's trying to push forward right now, but this isn't his entire army. Might still be enough, though. There's no Banes in this army. Ultra's going to get sniped. No Fungals available. Transfuses definitely are helping out. Just a single Ultra remaining right now, Lambo. I am very afraid for Dark's life. He has a lot of cash in the bank, but does not have the Larva to spend. It does not have enough gas to build Mass Ultra either. And he is in a world of trouble. Yeah, it looks like Maru finally did it. He cleaned up all the counterattacks. He dealt with Dark's annoying playstyle and also won the main engagement. And GG is called. And it's a 1-0 for Maru, but not an easy one by any stretch of the imagination. No, that was very nice. Very nice play indeed. Constant counterattacks, just trying to keep it going. Um, yeah, it, ah, man. Maru is so sick though. It really felt like he was gonna run out at some point, you know, run out of steam. He just kept yeah. losing more and more workers. And it's so frustrating because you really want to fight, but you just can't fight. And then eventually it is so easy to move into a position where the fight is not as great or to kind of get impatient. But he, he remained very patient. He knew what he... Where, where his strength lay, and that was in his main army. And once he cleaned up, he could finally move across the map, get that fight in, and it was beautiful. Yeah, this is honestly the dream finals. If you asked me before this season what I wanted to see in the grand finals, it's it's either, like it's between Maru, Hero, and Dark, having two of those play against each other. And now we're here with Dark against Maru. The first game already delivering on Maru's map pick as well. Maru barely wins in a very long game. This is like the best case scenario. Yeah. And here we are in game number two. The bottom left, the man who's down 1-0. He is Zerk. He is Dark. And his opponent in the top right. It's the Red Tyrant player. Playing for team on site, it is Maru. <laughs> Only I'm Maru getting cheese. Absolutely ham for Maru. They don't seem to <laughs> like the Zerg players very much, Lambo. Wonder why that is. Wonder if that's going to be a trend throughout the series or just this one time. Um, it's the audience definitely heavily biased towards uh, Maru there. Perhaps they just forgot to clap during dark. That is also possible, of course, but we wouldn't know. Mm hmm. Yeah. Very interesting for me that Dyke also picks Ancient. Uh, 
I always have this theory that the most Zerg favorite map in the end is not the map that the Zergs like the most because we don't practice it. Like, there's no Terran that ever plays Altitude 2 against us. Mm. So we have no practice on it, and then we end up picking the map that is not even that Zerg favorite um, in comparison. I, Cyril also does this. He doesn't even pick it second, he picks it third. So whenever Cyril plays a best of seven final series, Altitude is like the fifth or the sixth map, which is always funny for me to see. Indeed, quite interesting. You know, What's also interesting is that Ancient Cistern is the, the second the second map and all the other maps are Terran favorite. When I was talking with Solar, he told me all about it. I asked him to rate every map on a one to five star rating. And he said altitude is five stars for ZVT. Ancient Cistern is four stars and everything else is a single star. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there are, I, I don't think there's uh, anyone besides your moon that uh, thinks that the this like the the five remaining maps are not Terran favorite. I don't think you I don't think you even find Terran players disagreeing with that. Like mm -hmm. aside from Hero Marine and maybe his viewers. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. It's the uh, low ground CC is now going down fast. Second guess behind this for Maru as well. Once again, we're seeing that the triple Reaper setup here to start things off with. As Dark did indeed sneak in that third hatch. So a standard opener out of Dark versus well, what is now also a standard opener out of Maru, right? The yeah, but this is, this is the mind game win for Dark. This is the... I, I'm praying to God this is not a true Rex because then I am dead. This is really good against two Rex though. Because you can defend your third hatch. The third hatch is very early. Uh, you don't need the speed against the three Reapers. Like that, that, That's basically the theory. You can still defend with, a, with the Queens that you have and a couple of Zerglings, and then even if you lose a couple of units, it's still better for you than if you were to delay your third hatch and get the early speed. 13C going down on the side of Maru. As well as mm -hmm. a, yeah, a tech lab, a reactor. Very similar build order to last game, no? Or yeah, same so far. Absolutely the same so far. Uh, I, I think he could mix it up because the, the last game, I'm not entirely sure if that was safe against like a super committed to Gasling Bane online or something like that. So maybe he, he's going for the Medivix first this time. Actually, it should still be safe with the one of mines. It's just whatever you do off to Rex Reaper, it kind of ends up being safe. Hmm. Stim starts as uh, you have the reactor starport on the way here for Maru. Dark just. Uh, Getting creep tumors down. Very standard type of early game. Now, if you were a creep tumor, Lambo, <laughs> whose creep tumor would you want to be? If your goal is to spread as fast as possible. And you're the uh... first creep tumor that gets built. You know, you're the first you're the first tumor in the in, in, in the natural. That's what you are. I think I would be Bly's creep tumor because I would feel very special. He has like the biggest one creep tumor lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I feel like Nurcho and Scarlet also had. That was kind of like an ace or Zerg thing, you know? They would just get three creep tumors and then they'd spread that till the end of time. And have no no doubles. No 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 backup. <laughs> no doubles. I think Scarlet now does make m multiple ones and Nurcho always like the creep tumor wouldn't really go that fast. <laughs> you would put them not on the edge of creep. That's that's that Nurcho creep tumor. That's what that's what I knew him for. So yeah, I I, I think I'm I'm sticking with the lies. But uh, in general, I think the best crew right now is Rainer when he's on point. So I think it's the, the creep that spreads the fastest mm -hmm. from the first tumor. Once again, for a uh, for mind drop moving out, as well as that fake marine move out that we're seeing here. What is this uh, supposed to do? Is this just wanting to force out some units or pretending to be aggressive? Yeah. Yeah, it's forcing out units. As you see, th those 12 extra Zerglings, if he doesn't do the move out, they don't happen. So those are drones. So it's basically six drone kills uh, passively. Obviously not entirely the, the case because he has extra Zerglings because of it. But we see Dark actually going for Lingbane Muta again. And he really likes this against Turex Reaper, which is so funny to me because A, no one else does it. And B, Dark didn't even play Muta against the normal stuff that Muta is good against. Like not even against Banshee. Oh, not, the, not good micro by Dark. Once again, he loses three drones and 22 Zerglings, and I just pressed something that made an alarm go off. Okay, I, I figured it out. <laughs> Can you tell oh, me no, which no. hotkey it was? Or was it just your phone? It is Shift and then to the right of L, which for me is U on the German keyboard. Okay, I'm not gonna press that. It's a good tip. <laughs> <laughs> 
We'll have uh, the double drop heading towards the main base. Dark is going to spot it quite late. He will see it, though, with the Overlord. He needs to start moving in position. He has no links, though. Yeah, he's, he's occupied right now with the double Widow Mine drop. This time he's microing quite nicely against it, but the double <laughs> Medivac drop arriving at the exact same time. Mar the Dark is just not ready for it at all. Like, this is just a good opener. Like, I don't know what to tell you. It's, it's hard to deal with, but I think Dark... I don't know. He just thought he wasn't that far advanced in the game, I think. Is this he over? just absolutely didn't realize it. Why is he loading up? What? Oh my god, he, he saw the Spire and he was like, okay. He's waiting for the Mutas to arrive, to then go in with the Lynx and the Mutas at once to kill my Medivacs. Maru could have won the game with those two Medivacs. Yeah. There's no Mutas even on the way, and there was not enough Marines to clear this. There was no Banelings. This... Like, Maru just played too safe. He he wanted... He, he thought Dark was such a good player that he respected them so much that it made him made a mistake, but obviously Maru doesn't see what we saw there. Is that Dark just... You know, he just wasn't ready. <laughs> he just messed up. Yeah. Holy crap. Maru's still very far ahead, though. Up 20 supply right now. Uh, the only thing that Dark has going for himself is the fact that he has Baneling speed. Um, and that is not such a great feat at 7 minutes and 22 seconds into the game. 1-1, one, one, not quite done for either player. I think it's going to finish at approximately the same time, actually. Yeah, I, th I think this these pushes are theoretically not good against what Dark is doing. Because whenever I saw Dark play Lingmane Muta against two Rex, uh, two Rex Reaper and two tanks, He's basically three base all inning every single time I watch him play. I never seen him take a fourth base and drone it up. But Maru is just so far ahead from the early game that he's doing it anyways. Dark engaging now because he wants to save that plus one carrier base that is so important, but it forces him into a bad engagement. I just don't see how he's going to clear up that army. And even though this is a four star map for Zerg, it's not enough stars for Dark to win this game because he's dead and Maru takes a 2 0. Wow. That is, uh, that is significant damage there. Very significant damage, one could even say. As the game Very ended, Lambo. Yeah. That's yep. not good. It's not good, especially concerning because it was literally the same opener. I think Dark just didn't expect the double medevac to be that fast. And he just messed up against the Widowmines. Just not good control against the Widowmines. Um, in general. Maybe should play some more Protoss off race to, uh, to learn how to react against it a little better. I like the thought of that, because Protoss players are known to dealing perfectly with mind drops 90% of the time. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this will actually, the more I look at it, the better I think it becomes as well. You know, there's just so many different little variations. I hadn't quite seen the, the four mine one yet. Usually you just see like the 16 marines and two medivacs, and then they go into mines afterwards. But it feels like there's just an infinite amount of builds here. It's yeah, mad. I... I I say this with Terran in general, as long as you spend your money consistently... It's a build? Anything is a build order, yeah. <laughs> they just do anything, like it's so random, like Gumiho's builds, they don't even look like builds, and then they surprise the Zerg, and all of a sudden, because of that, they're good again. Like, just like what we saw with the three or four battle cruisers into Bio, like that should work as well. All right. Game number three here, as uh, Maru now on a five-game winning streak, is that correct? That is correct. Absolutely, yeah. Three games against Cure in a row, now up 2-0 against Dark. It's the man here in the top left, Maru. And his opponent, down two maps, it is Dark. Still positive win rate though for him as well today. We can't forget that Dark bopped Gumio. It wasn't really a close series, like Maru had against Cure. Maru really had to fight. So, yeah, I, 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 I honestly personally don't believe um, that stamina affects games like that too much. I think you can play too serious without too many issues. Especially because there is like like there's some nerfs that actually help in that regard as well. But uh, yeah, Dark had a much easier semifinals. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, yeah, much much easier. I think in a way it's kind of nice though to to, to have what Maru had because it shows that you're mentally resilient as well. You know. Just for yeah. yourself. I think that's nice. Oh, what is this opener, Lambo? Talk to me. What in the world? Yeah, this is Gasless. It's, go it's got a new humanity. Dark has played this already against Special as well in the group stage of this tournament. And it matches up nicely against Turex Reaper. It is really bad, once again, against Turex Reaper. And I feel like if Maru realizes that Dark, the last two games already, just didn't respect the fact that Maru can also play Turex Reaper, um, that Maru actually pulls it out. You know the funny part is, Maru against me in the Africa Champions Cup also had a build order win with 3x Reaper against late speed.
but he just missed micro so much that I ended up ahead. <laughs> that, that maybe maybe Dark watched that and he was like, okay, there's no way he's doing that again, because that's I think the most recent TVZ that he's played. Yeah. So, yeah. Reaper oh no! <laughs> oh yeah, that was not savable anymore. The moment that drone was flying, uh, if, if if you don't land on the hex, you can't build the spark crawler anymore. So you need to you need to build the spore before that. So yeah, dark dark messed up there. That's frustrating for dark. It is one less drunk. You need to take out these gold minerals at some point, surely, right? Yeah, but not not too soon. Like oh. there's no rush. Forex. It is a forex. This is good for dark, I think. I, I think this actually sucks against gasless. Maru just now realizes it's gasless, but he already decided to go for it. So you can defend this even with Roaches if you go Gasless. It's the one time you can defend two Rex into four Rex with Roaches is if you open up with Gasless because you get way more minerals at first. Um, if he was to defend it with speed, he already would have needed to take double gas. Oh, another drone lost. Dark not on point in the early game with his drone control. He, he's going to be playing Roaches as well, right? That's going to be the uh, the follow-up now be. that he's taking the gas so late. Has to be, yeah. There's a... Uh... There's no way around it. He actually needs to start a Roach Warren at 3.30. I, I've tested Gasless very much so in preparation for my Africa Champions Cup group because I had Bian and Maru. And I, I, I tested around with Roach openers. You need to start it already if you want to not die. So I, I really hope for, for Dark's sake that Maru is not realizing... Like, you can actually engage without combat shields against Gasless. If Maru does that, Dark is dead. Because his Roach Warren already is too late. If he waits for a combat shield, he really still needs to start it now. We have combat shield on the way. Stim is uh, close to halfway at this point. Work account looking mighty fine as well for Dark, but of course that's not going to be that important if you then lose every single unit that you ever owned to the four racks. This is this is an all-in, right? Like there are, there are follow-ups. You can still go for like a, a two-base tank all-in afterwards, but this is this is very committed. It's it's very committed. I wouldn't call it an all-in, but uh, I think he's gonna pull SCVs. So this is gonna be a full all-in. And I don't see how Dark defends it if he makes any more drones. Like I really don't. Dark, you need to stop making drones. Uh, to be honest, he needs a spine as well. But there is no way of scouting because he's gasless. So Maru knows that, and the roaches also. I mean, there is no way of there being uh, banelings. So let's see Dark's vision. Yeah, I don't think he even sees the Marine move out. He doesn't even know it's four Rex. Like for him, it could still be the same opening. It's really good for him that he's making the blind roaches. That would be this would be terrible against the Widow Mine drop follow-up. He's making an extra drone. Ten roaches, is is this enough? I mean he he can pull his own drones as well. It's gonna be a close fight. Yeah, we have six queens, we have ten roaches. The spine goes down right now as this does get spotted. Combat shield finishing up in about three seconds. SEV's coming off the line. A couple of mines could, of course, help negate the damage of the roaches. Not being used quite yet. Not a single mine, actually. Okay, here we go. Mines now being used. Queens going down. SEV's falling. Army-wise, this looks kind of okay. New stim needs to be used momentarily as ten more roaches are in production. Lots of workers falling on both sides, but I do believe that Dark is not going to straight up die. These marines are simply too low. We have so many more roaches popping here. Drones now need to be moved away. Dark makes the correct call there, as I think this is the third stim that now gets used. And uh, it, this is real close, but I, I do believe that Maru's units are just too low. Yeah, they're too low eventually. Obviously, without Medivex, you need to win the game with the first two stims, and that's not what Maru ended up doing. I think he didn't pull enough SCVs, to be honest. I think there should have been more SCVs being pulled. But yeah, Dark's weak point was if Maru engaged before um, before combat shields even, because there was just no roaches out yet. But uh, Maru waited for a little bit too long, and with that, the roaches actually worked out quite nicely there. It's really important as well that, that Dark did this blindly. Like, Dark had no idea this was a 4-Rex. This could have just been 3cc as well again, and he would have blindly made roaches at 50 drones, which obviously isn't good against 3cc. So, great call there from Dark, and this is... I mean, this is a basically unlosable position at this point, I think. Layers on the way, already halfway done. Do we get to see like some type of 1-1 timing attack now off of this, or just glyo reconstitution and go? What's the what's the play going to be here, Chief? I, I think 1-1 Roach. I would be very surprised if he does anything besides that. I, he, he knows, obviously, that he's ahead. Theoretically, on this map, the best, the best uh, follow-up from Roach is just rushing Hive. But Dark even won one on this map in general, so from an even position, so 
I don't think he's afraid to do this from uh, such a good spot. Mm. Gotcha. Okay, Cloud Reconstitution on the way first. Evo as well coming down right now. So we have some random Marines just stimming on the right side. Should not be capable of really achieving anything. Probably trying to pull Dark out of position, but that doesn't entirely work. Dark has enough creep spread that he can see his opponent coming from a mile away on the third base. And doesn't even end up losing a drone with some nice spore micro there. 113 supply to 67. Now, if Maru manages to win this game, I don't think we have to play game four anymore because that would be... Uh, that has to be the comeback of the century. At that point, I think Dark is so broken in the mind. Might as well not try anymore. Changeling gets sniped. Overseer gets taken out before it gets a scout in as well. Uh, is, th is there any way in which you see Maru defend this? What, what needs to happen for Maru to win this game, basically? Yeah, he needs uh, the fight of a lifetime on his side of the map. I think what he needs to happen is... <laughs> Dark needs to run into him while he's camping on two base. I don't. I, there, there, there is no way he wins a fight while he is taking a third base. I just don't see it happening. So I think it needs to be that because I remember Maru coming back from an even worse position against Solar on Curi. No, it wasn't Curious Minds. It was um, Nightshade. Was the map called? It was even worse than this, I think. And uh, that's exactly what happened. Like it, Solar played one one Roach to try and close out the game after. He destroyed the proxy two racks, got it right away, killed the barracks, got ahead, and then he won with like tanks on the high ground because Solar engaged. Or some weird thing like that. But yeah, I, I think it has to be counterattack plus holding on two bases. Okay. Fort base is on the way here for Dark already. Uh, it sends a couple of drones over. Main base queen under some pressure as well. Will not quite end up falling. A couple of drones do go down, so this was nice for, for, for Maru, but... Uh, this is just the start like of, of what needs to happen for him to even be close to consider it an even game still down 60 supply the time he, wait is he gonna just hit with carapace or will he wait for plus one range as well i think he should hit right now uh, I, I don't think you should wait for a missile but theoretically he can also wait until he's maxed and then morph i mean he needs to morph ravagers now and just go i think okay. there's no reason for him to still wait Starts working on those rocks in the middle of the map. It's uh, the double uh, marine drop still trying to deal some damage. Roaches once again in position. There's roaches in the main as well. There's roaches absolutely everywhere. 11 Ravagers being morphed. Link speed behind this. So there's a possibility to transition out of this into melee upgrades after plus one range finishes up. And then just play a macro-like game if you don't end up straight up winning with this particular push. Um, there are three tanks and they're in pretty good positions. There's some depots as well to maybe wall off some area here, but there's so many Ravagers, Lambo. There's so many Ravagers, there's also so many Roaches. I mean, Dark actually messed up the Corrosivite so the tank doesn't die right away on the left side. I think Maru did the absolute best that he could with the units that he has. It's just not enough units. It's not enough units. He's, he's losing right now to the Roaches and naturally he's losing the fight at his third base as well. And yeah, he's he's pretty dead. I think as as dead as they get. Pretty dead indeed. Ay 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 ay. The averagers do uh, find themselves locked into a corner here, but there's so many more roaches, there's so many more averagers, and there's hardly anything left here for Maru. He's trying to stim in, take out everything he can, boost back home, but at some point he'll need to face uh, face these roaches. And there's still a crap ton. There's more on the way. Gases 7 and 8 are being taken behind this for Dark, who actually continues into range upgrades as well. So, yeah, it's it. GG gets called. Dark wins game 3 and puts himself on the board. Very nice defense from Dark. Clutch defense as well. I actually thought he was dead. I'm not going to lie. I thought he over and the SCV pull. Uh, I, I thought it should have been enough, but it uh, wasn't. And with that... Does that mean you also. believe a little bit more right now? I, I mean, for sure, I believe more than I did before. It was 2-0 before with a very one-sided no, game. No, on I, I mean, in, in, in the gasless defense versus the 2-Rex. Now that you've seen oh, no, the I, I think I think gasless is good against 2 racks. It's just really bad against 2 racks. I need a small break as well. I need a small to toilet break. Oh, that's allowed. I'll be right back. We'll talk about other things then. Oh, the dog was waiting outside for him. So loyal, no? Waiting until Lambo sometimes stays in his room for 14 15 hours at a time. I heard usually he doesn't get up to pee. This is just for the show. The dog sits there the entire day, waiting for Lambo to come out. 
Doesn't even want a treat or anything, just wants affection. And Lambo always gives it abundantly as well. That's just how he is. Wild like that. Ba, ba, ba. Exciting series so far, I do like it. Next map is going to be. Uh, what is it called? Altitude. That's also exciting. So this is the second best Zerg map. Well, it's the best Zerg map, as Lambo said. Zerg players get so little practice on it against Terrans that we're not even sure if it's truly the best Zerg map. Because you know, no, we have no sample size. Sometimes people say the sample size is too small, but this one just has no sample size. Which also means the sample size is too small because there's no sample. Mm. Man, water is delicious. If you drink too much water, you constantly have to go to the toilet. That's also not a winning move. Yeah, end up like Lambo. We'll wait for him to come back. I wonder if the dog is going to try chasing him in again. If I was the dog, I think I would try to. If Lambo spends the entire day in that room, as a dog, you must be thinking something real special is happening there. Because the dog can't imagine spending so long in the same room. Yet Lambo is there all the time. He likes Lambo. And he likes the things that Lambo likes. Because the dog also likes himself. Lambo likes the dog. So with a very small sample size, or just very small... The, the, the bites of information that the dog has. He must think something amazing is happening. But whenever he walks in, the dog doesn't think something amazing. Look, like he's trying to get in again. Lambo's closing him out, though. No chance for you, dog. Also eating a banana. That actually would have been high tier. Okay, I'm back. Hello? Was he waiting outside? Mm-hmm. And also when you yeah. came back, he wanted to get in? Yes. Yeah, what a guy. <laughs> what a guy. He must be real confused what's going on here. Because every time he enters, it doesn't seem so interesting for him. You know, it's just a, a computer. He doesn't understand what's working there. Does he understand things that happen on the screen or no? Like if there's a uh, cat on the screen, does he want to fight it? No, he does not. I don't think he cares. But yeah, he, he usually is in here just uh, today. Also, his, his bed is uh, being washed right now, so he doesn't uh, have anywhere to, to lay down. Understandable. Okay, you ready? Or you want to finish your banana? I'm ready. You can do the start. Uh, I'll do the start. Don't worry about it. All right, in the bottom left, as our blue Zerg player, we have Dark. And in the top left, up 2-1, it is Maru. Actually, losing one of his maps, Neo Humanity, known to be uh, a very good map for Terran. Some people even call it the greatest map for Terran. These people are liars, but it is still a very good map for Terran. Especially in the late game, which is a, a stage of the game that, that Maru is familiar with. He's won series, he's won games, he's won tournaments based off his late game. Um, so yeah... Seeing him lose that, that's gotta, it's got to feel good for Dark. Not just because he finally gets a map win, but also because it's that particular map. And then straight away, you go into Altitude, which technically should be Dark's best map. But as discussed before, it might actually not be his best map, or he might not feel as confident there. It's probably yeah. the best Zerg map, but is Dark also good on it? No one knows. We're going to figure out this puzzle, because every puzzle has an answer. Ain't that right, Lambo? Yeah, that's that's right. At least a puzzle is well done. Um, I mean, dude, you know what I find very funny is when I prepared for Africa Champions Cup, I asked. Um, I was talking with Solar about how how Maru is playing, like mm -hmm. like way before, and he just told me, "Nah, this guy isn't even playing two Rex Reaper anymore." And against me, he played two Rex Reaper every game, and three Rex Reaper, and so far he's played two Rex Reaper every game. And just now, I realize that they're on the same team. So <laughs> I feel like I feel like I've been tricked. <laughs> she probably shouldn't ask Solar out of all the Zergs. <laughs> Not a good informant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Solar doesn't bite the hand that feeds him. Smart yeah. man. Um, <laughs> it's actually every game so far has been uh, 
and <laughs> Turex Reaper. That is beautiful. That is actually beautiful. Do you think he's going to have another follow-up here? Or you think he goes yeah, back I mean, to I mean, I, I know he has more follow-ups because he has... I mean, he even can do the four regs differently. He can do four regs, then fake pu push out, then do a tank push. He has different three CC variations: one with a Raven, one with a one with a Banshee. He can even make a Viking or a Liberator. To be honest, he can literally do whatever you want. It's it's all a build order from two regs. He can make a BC for all I care. I have another thought that I just had. What if you send the drone out towards the right side? You build a hatchery, so on the line fort base, so like, can you see my pin? I can't pin. Yeah. And then I, I, you I know cancel it and build a roach warren on it. And then what? You roach all in. <laughs> the roach all ins don't work, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, but he won't know. You show them your main base, you know, give him a tour. Right, 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 right. So, so yeah, they'll think, the issue oh, is... this is just a stand. My opponent has no clue what he's doing. What a moron. And then boom, the roach is hit. And then what? Yeah. Well, first of all, it would need to be two base because you can't afford a hatch cancel Roachborn on three base. So then already he's uh, suspicious of, of there being anything. And then also Reapers are just always on the map. So they scout the Roaches on the other side of the map. The bunker is in time and you have a full wall on the natural. And you have many Marines because you open with two wrecks. Oh, you should get that. Nice micro. Very cool. Big damage as well on that hatchery, by the way. You see that? Yep. 597 HP remaining from the original 1500. Man, Reapers have uh, a lot of damage. That's crazy yeah. how much damage they deal. I think it's actually a mistake he didn't go for that right away. Because Altitude, the third base, is super far away. Like, mm -hmm. I don't don't fault him, because he probably doesn't practice this map. But if he went there straight away with Dark's opener, Dark went Crypto in the main first, I believe. That uh, I think he would have gotten the hatchery. Or at the very least, two Queen kills. Minimum, because the speed is super late. I think he's going for the Widow Mine build again. And what is Dark doing? Is this like a Muta Rush or something? Or is this going to Bane Lanes? This is a fast layer, no? It's a very fast layer. And it's three gas. Uh, my guess right now is that it is... Uh, yeah, I mean, I can't do it anymore because there's a Roach point. What was your guess going to be, Lambo? I was still thinking uh, between fast bending speed or. And then I was still thinking of the Kobe Roaches. Because three, three gas is not enough for Mutas. Mm. <clears throat> I was thinking Nidus, but Nidus makes absolutely no sense. So then it has to be. It's going six gas. Either though. Muta or. Yeah. Wait, I think he's run? adding them a little bit too, uh, too fast. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking this feels very fast on this. Maybe it's a fake Roach all in into Mutas. If he does this, he's my new hero. And also my <laughs> old hero, because I always liked him already. So really, he's not gaining anything by it. Just as a bad build. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> I mean, he's just got, he's making roaches. He uh, scouted the 3rd CC this time. Um, right away. So he knows what is up. He's also playing on a very big map. So he basically is joining up to 66 right away. This is where Turex actually falls behind. Not only did Dark get the build order advantage with the delayed speed fast third, but then also on top of that, he realized what the follow-up was going to be and then he droned up right away. So this is where I think he already has an advantage on a map that is already good for him. So this leads to games where Terran kind of has to camp and this map is not that good for camping because the further you expand, the the more uh, far apart your, your bases are. You stretch yourself very far on this map if you go up to like six spaces. Hmm. Yeah, Maru is moving out right now. He tried to hide this marine move out for very long, but then straight just boosted his Metavex into Overlord Vision. So that wasn't quite great. Stims in very aggressively. This is just way too many roaches. Uh, if he kills four links and doesn't lose anything, that would be a good trade. Uh, there's not going to be anything better here for him. We'll end up losing a couple of marines as well. Dark continues building roaches of 67 workers. Glyal Reconstitution is done. 1-1 one, one still a little bit away as a fort base does get thrown down. What is the chance that we see Dark basically halt worker production here and then pushes with 1-1 one, one, once more? Very high because his fort base is super late. I actually think Dark could have been greedier than he was with Roaches. I think he could have gotten 66 drones right away and then get an earlier fort. Obviously the earlier fort doesn't matter if he wants to 1-1 one, one Roach anyways. Um, 
So yeah, I think he's just going for the timing this time around. Oh, he can actually delay the tank. So yeah, really nice play there. He made an early overs here just for that. Like that was his plan all along, 100%. So that's that's really nice from him. He's in position for all of those marine drops. I'm I would be so worried to do this. This feels like such a waste of a strategy because it's a very big map. It's the best Zerg map already, but it's not that great of a one-on-one Roach map, you know? That, uh, I mean, Dark is known to have massive bots, so it's <laughs> it's understandable that he would go for something like this. But I would never do that on this map. Knight is uh, 26 out of 36. First one's going to be in the main base, right? I think he's going to attack and then put it in the main, yeah. yeah. There's a couple of Dark spots actually in the main. There's one specifically above the, the third base of the Terran that... That, that actually isn't being seen at all and there's two others that are semi-hidden but not really so that doesn't count mm -hmm. i mean maru is still on the map this is very late the move out from Derek. He, he has way too many units at home still i don't think he can attack like this i guess he needs to put the nidus in front then not in the main base or he needs to hope that maru doesn't look at his mini map which happens relatively frequently from tyrants to be honest three tanks also not sieged up in position at all man if if Derek was here with everything he would, at, at the very least, force a lift. I think he still will do that because Maru is just completely out of position. He now, at the very least, spots the Nidus, so that will not get up. But this is... Honestly, very mature decision-making from Maru, not trying to defend the third base there. Yeah, it's a lot of supply waiting out there for Dark, who throws down another Nidus. Continuous Roach production here. Is this the... What we would call the... Is he going to go for it? No, 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 no. He's going to contain it. There you go. Zero chance he runs in there. <laughs> yeah, he starts to, to, I think he should start an infestation pit already. The knight is actually super nice now because then he can keep a couple more units in front. He al already needs some units back at home in case of a doom drop, which is, I feel like, always the response here yeah. in order to get out. Um, so yeah, he's already rallying back more units with a knight even. So he's using that mostly defensively at this point. Spots the double medevac as well, which is nice. That's a lot of marines, though. That's not enough roaches on that right side as the marines pop in. And that base is very low. It's gonna get targeted down here. Now, luckily for Dark, he doesn't have enough workers anyway to saturate that base if he just moves towards the left side. So, nothing really of value lost. He continues upgrading on the roaches, gets an infestation pit, and has the eight gases. Uh, what, is, what is the follow up plan here? Just going into Lurker on low drone counts? Yeah, going into Lurker and remaking some drones at the very least. Uh, I think it's fine while containing his opponent for as long as possible. Like, he did a really good job. We, ne we need to remember that Maru is mining on two bases here. And Terrans generally mine out faster because they also use mules. So, Maru is going to be on a bad economy for a very long time. So, as long as he gets up Lurkers, it's going to be difficult for Maru to transition into Ghost. Hatchery gets cancelled one more time on that. Uh, what used to be the third now tries to be the fourth base. 2-2 has finished for Maru. 2-2 getting closer and closer to being done on dark side as well. Maru getting a lot of tanks out here. Pumping from two factories. Has six. Feels comfortable enough to take that third base. Dark still on a very low worker count. Almost feel like that if... He needs to do something with his roach army, doesn't he? Well, he needs to trade it out eventually. But I don't think he can take a fight right now. I think he needs to use it... Um, like, he should stop producing roaches first of all. Uh, he's gonna try to take a fight. <laughs> if it's the right call, I don't know. He's gonna wait for until his upgrades are even. There are eight tanks at this point in the game for Maru, defensively. And, I mean, he's gonna have a nice concave. He has a very long time to set up this, this engagement. It's gonna be 2-2 two -two versus 2-2. Two -two. He's trying to distract at the same time in the main base. A lot of these tanks were unseached, so a really good fight. In the beginning, at uh, towards the bottom of the side, but overall, there's just so many tanks, and Maru is dodging the bites quite nicely with the with the Marines. That he, he did something with the Roaches, all right. It wasn't the greatest trade. He still killed 17 SCVs, though, so it's better than doing nothing, I think. He's building 70, 23 new Roaches actually here, so he's got he wants to continue this type of play. Still on a very low worker count. Yes, he killed 17 workers, but mules do exist, and he's only up seven workers himself. He's slowly but surely trickling in workers here. Has been long distance mining from that third base that wasn't there, by the way. Yeah. Which is also yes. not quite ideal because, I mean, if you have another base that can just regular <laughs> mine, that's obviously going to be significantly better. He's been making some some significant misplays here. Uh, oh my god, Maru is moving out. 
You think that, that's a mistake? I can't believe, yeah, I mean, obviously Maru doesn't know that he remade the Roaches. I actually thought ma remaking Roaches is a terrible mistake. Uh, I, I think you were surprised as well, right? But yeah. Maru also didn't didn't expect it, and now he's moving out. He still has so many tanks. I think if Maru just sits at home does nothing, he's in such a good spot, but now instead he's moving towards the center of the map where he's going to get surrounded with Master Roach. There's also some Infestors on the way with Pathogen Dance already, so there's also going to be Fungus. At the very least, he's... Managing to cancel the base, Dark realizes, okay, he doesn't want to run into all of those siege tanks together. He's just going to defend at home with Fungal plus Ravagers and counterattack with all the Roaches. Maru doesn't quite realize, I think, how much Dark is really counterattacking with because he's not lifting the CC yet. Okay, now he's evacuating it. These units will die. Uh, a very painful death here towards, uh, towards the Roach Ravager, but Dark not controlling it perfectly either. And Maru is handling the situation a little bit better than Dark is for sure. There's a massive fungal that uh, I think you didn't catch with kill no, by 24 marines on the other side. <laughs> okay, so then that that was good then for uh, for Dark because I'm wondering why his supply is looking so good. Now he's trying to engage from both sides here. Dark that is. His counter attack still is not quite here, so the tanks are getting some decent value. But in the end, he is gonna clean it up, yeah, which is very important for him. Yeah. Yeah, bows are gonna connect. Medivacs do stay alive, but they're pretty much out of energy the army that tried to reinforce is also already pre-stimmed which is not how you want to do it this is like showing up to a party way too drunk already like boys this is not it like <laughs> you need to do that during the fight not, not before <laughs> no, you're not coming in the bouncer is gonna know surely <laughs> we can see it in your eyes you smell awful it's like 17 beers before you show up that's not okay it's 8 p.m right now party doesn't start for another three hours uh Infestors being burrowed all around the map. We have tunneling claws as well, trying to deal some damage. There are four orbital commands, by the way, which is somewhat surprising. Killed a full medevac there with a the fanger. So that, that was really good for Dyke as well. We can see his supply count is looking really good, and he has 3-3 three, three right now against 2-2, but I still don't think he can kill Maru, which means if Maru eventually maxes out, and Maru has better economy right now than Dark, he's still in a good position. But I think it's going to be very difficult for either player to kill each other. <laughs> He's running into those fungus. Another fungus that hits home barely survives with the medevac this time, but Dark is getting further and further ahead in supply. He could have gotten that actually with the Burrowed Investor. Uh, that one medevac. It had only mm. 7 HP left, 5 Marines in it. Would have been a free kill there. A single fungal, poof. Would have hit, yeah, take it out instantly. Would have been safe. Definitely sick. worth it as well. Maybe he wasn't paying attention. Yeah, can't blame the guy. There's a lot happening here with uh, roaches, infestors being spread out pretty much everywhere. Creep is pretty mediocre as Maru <laughs> still up. Sorry? Mediocre. <laughs> There's no creep here, man. <laughs> Zero <laughs> active tumors. Come yeah, on. So, so, so that is mediocre, no? It's not good. Well, I, I think mediocre is in the middle of things. This, I would say, is okay, far bad. beyond neut fa yeah, <laughs> far worse than neutral. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's no, there's literally zero active tumors. <laughs> so yeah, I, I would call this bad creep, right? Mm -hmm. Not to be a hater, but um, I mean, I think Dark kind of gave up on it. He also doesn't play the army that's most reliant on the creeps, right? He's not very Ling Bane heavy. I just don't see like Dark is so good at this type of army where he has Infestors, Vipers, and he still has Roach Ravager left over. I feel like. I wouldn't know how to trade this off, and then when the Terran is maxed, I get destroyed. But Dark is so good at this type of stuff. Like, he always finds Fungus. Okay, this is the biggest jinx ever since this Fungus whiffed hardcore. But he, he always finds Fungus and then somehow trades out the Roach Ravager passively while doing nothing, defensively, little by little. And that way transitions into his late game army. He's really good at that. Just building a bank and then playing defensively. And for some reason, the Terrans just don't do it. Like, I think what you're supposed to do as Terran is do literally nothing here, max out, and then you can do something. What is that something until? Like, does he start moving out, or does he just take 17 more bases? Like, he's gonna get a bunch of ghosts out here, um, but do you move out with ghost tank, or what's the play? I think you, I think you, absolutely nothing is the perfect play, but I think you can even move out. But he's a little bit too far behind in army supply once they're maxed, that I think moving out is a little bit hard. Um, but I think even just maxing out and then going for a full move out is okay. As long as the opponent still has m mostly Roach Ravager. Dark just doesn't build any drones, does he? He doesn't give a crap. He has 60 yeah. soon. Or he will have 60. That's a very <laughs> low amount. These, I mean, the burrowed infestors. 
yeah. are uh, gaining value by by the creep spread being so poor. Because Maru is not scanning ever in the in the center of the map. So the infestors could be anywhere, which means as a Terran you're not just randomly scanning, hoping there's an infestor. So that 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 actually kind of helps uh, Dark here. But he has a raven. Maru build a raven. Because he's a genius. Just like Twitch chat. Yeah. That's the one thing that uh, Maru and Twitch chat share is the fact that they want a raven in their late game army so they don't get surprised by, by investors. Yeah. No, it's for sure a good call. He's also messing turrets to make sure he's not getting a, an overseer into his main with a lurker knight. He really doesn't want that. Already making turrets at his fifth base location. His fourth base is an orbital, by the way, which I'm a huge fan. That already paid off, big time, and you can always lift it, but in, in general, whenever Dark plays his style, he doesn't link counterattacks. So you don't actually need a planetary. So I, I think that is also a very high IQ move from Maru. Maru's he's now adding here. on... Yeah, he's, he's adding on extra factor. He, he realized, okay, I just need to do nothing, which is 100% the correct call. And what does Dark need to do then? Like, uh, imagine Dark is the perfect human being. What would well, he be I doing right now? If both play perfect, I think uh, Maru would eventually attack when he's maxed out and just dodge the fungus and then easily win. And I think Dark would just do absolutely nothing and try to mine out most parts of the maps until Maru is too split. And then you go either for massive Bane armies, engage, remax, engage, remax, engage, remax, or transition to Broodlords. I don't think he can do really much with the army that he has right now. It's just not equipped to deal with Ghost Tank. Like, Ghost Tank counters everything he has. Uh, yeah. It generally counters everything that Zerg has, but it less so against Ling Bane armies at the very least. What do you think of Dark just taking all the topside bases right now? Would that be good? Like taking the gold as well? Because it yeah. feels like that he's not going to get anything done in the bottom side anymore. Even his own base mining there is going to be contested right now. As Maru uh, feels he can do that. Yeah, I think, I think that's a play. I think even taking the very far top left base, like trying to take base away from the Terran, forcing him to engage into you, is usually how you want to play in late game. He now trades away some of the Roaches. Obviously, there's not much he can do other than just giving them away for free. Replacing them with Zerglings, uh, which are mostly going to be Banelings, I believe. It's still just his work account is so low. He realizes now, he's, he's, he's always firing up five extra drones, but I think it would have been way better if he five minutes ago realized and fired up 20 extra drones. Because he can't do anything, and then... You can argue, okay, he's just hoping the entire time for Maru to move out, but uh, Maru's just not giving him the favor. Yeah. Just U EMP overseers for Yeah, I was going to say, huge EMPs on the overseers there. <laughs> <laughs> these guys won't be dropping changelings. Anytime so huge fungal though on these ghosts, as Ravagers are going to get the bile connections as well. You said that it would happen. You said that I would not be capable of getting anything done against ghost tank, but my man Dark always gets the fungal, and that was an absolutely huge fungal there. Oh mm. my god, that that fight was not supposed to go down like this. Nidus network at the same time in the main base from an overseer that wasn't EMP, two changelings in there. I don't think Maru is quite paying attention to that. Are there lurkers in the Nidus? It's empty. Yeah, I, I, I don't think he, he loaded up anything there because he was afraid of dying for a little bit, so he had nothing there. <laughs> Maru not responding still. He still didn't realize, like you hear the sound, like where do you think, isn't the first thing you always look is the main base? He's still not even rallying, the, they both forgot that the Nidus exists. There's three roaches in it now. Yep. Could pop them out. He's, Maru is pushing with everything towards the left side. He He's had enough. He saw that the space was exposed, there's obviously no creep spread there, he also scanned that earlier on. Now he's pushing there with everything. At the same time, a lurker got rallied out and the roaches are still hotkeyed with the main army, which means they're just move commanding. <laughs> Why is Maru nuking his main base? It's one lurker, bro! It's yes. one! Just scan! For the love of God! You don't need to nuke your base! What? what? <laughs> I've never seen this. Why would he do that? What was the nuke even for? That was so overkill, even if... <laughs> what the... Dude, I, this, I also never seen someone unload Infestor Ravager in the main base of his opponent. <laughs> they disable on the Infestor, now EMPs the Infestor. Dark gets out with everything, the orbital is burning down, I don't think Maru is going to save that one. And at the same time, the planetary at the bottom base is exposed. It's complete mayhem here on, on altitude as they're just trying to find little engagements favorable for themselves. 
And now he dropped one mule to actually repair the orbital, which is really good. And I mean, I have to say, I still favor Maru's overall army count, but his position, he's starting to be mined out on all of his initial bases. So he needs to secure a new base very, very soon. Yeah. Uh, also, I don't think Maru has, has quite the future that people thought he had in pest control if StarCraft wouldn't work out anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there we have a roach infestation. Like, ah, burn down the house. What? <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry, son. I'm the expert here. Just listen to me, okay? <laughs> you see him walk into your house with a bunch of TNT. He's like, I, I, I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Sir, there will be no more roaches in your house. <laughs> no shot. It's <laughs> so sick. There's a single lurker as well when he started the nuke. <laughs> yeah. Liberator going quite ham here on the far left side as the spores are being constructed in that position. We have more ghosts in production. Armies are big. I, I do much prefer the type of army that Dark is working with right now than let's say five or six minutes ago, right? He, he really did manage to do a great job trading out all these inferior roaches and now has, a, has an army that can actually do things. Doesn't have a lot of banes. Uh, just very Ling heavy in a way. Why is that? I think just because he doesn't uh, think he's going to get anything done with the with the banes. He prefers the mobility and then hoping for uh, fights where his opponent's out of position. Good snipes there on the Vipers. Another Nidus goes down in the main base. Oh, also, um, Maru just lost all of his units in the top left. I'm not sure he caught that. No, I did not. What was that? He just, just bio? He just ran into Lurkers with move command. Was that bio or ghost? That was bio. bio. Okay. Nor nor normal bio units still. That was like 30 supply worth of bio. That uh, could have honestly killed the base once again. But instead, Dark once again retakes the supply lead. Still, Maru's army is very much preferable here to have. He has 15 ghosts and 12 siege tanks. <laughs> Dark went for 20 Lurkers. So if he ever gets in a position, it's going to be super difficult for Maru to clear up. But whenever he runs into Maru, he's going to lose so many Lurkers on the way there because there's just so many tanks and ghosts that uh, Dark somehow needs to find a fight where either Maru's army is split up and he has everything together or Maru is just completely out of position. Yeah, we now have an attack on the top side of the map as Lynx find these tanks. Uh, backup planetary here. Well, I guess the only planetary here is going to get taken out. SFEs do manage to evacuate. A couple of turrets will go down as well. Viper makes its way over towards that side. Maru now feels confident to push in towards what I think is the 5 o'clock base, but lots of lurkers are in position there. That's what happens if you have 17 lurkers total. Ooh! No lift on that orbital here on the 12 o'clock. That's a, a bit of a mistake out of Maru. He still has five orbitals remaining, but that's not a crazy amount of orbitals by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, Dark's still being annoying also in Maru's main base. Got a couple of links in. Threw on the Nidus, now borrowed the links. So that's just extra action spent for Maru defending this stuff. Maru actually was a little bit slow there on the response. He went top with all of the ghosts at first, then went back down when he saw the lurkers, and then went back up a little bit of hesitation there. And now once again, the, lur the ghosts are out of position, which means the initial snipes are not there, but it's so many tanks that Dark is running into. I don't think this is cost effective whatsoever. He's also losing a lot of the Ravagers, which I think will help him in the long run because the Ravagers really are quite supply inefficient at this point in the game. But he lost a lot of Lurkers there. He went down from 20 Lurkers to just three remaining at this point. Yeah. The Dark lost about 6, 7k of resources, while Maru lost, I think it was 4k resources. And I just checked the resources lost just before that fight, so I got a bit lucky there. Um, Dark, however, is still mining a bit more, but he's lacking in the gas count. He's not having extractors mining on that bottom side either. There's still so many ghosts around. Um, I, I, I feel like Banelings are going to be the only solution to this amount of ghosts, no? C can you realistically do anything with a different type of unit? Like, are you just hoping for a fungal plus Banes here? I, I think so, yeah. I think you're just hoping for a surround and then uh, somehow catching the ghost. Or you just hope to keep him out of position and just fight wherever the ghosts aren't, which is what Dyke has been doing so far. Like, he, he went in at the top, he realized the ghosts were not there, then he realized the ghosts went towards the top, he took the fight in the bottom side. It's just that with this amount of siege tanks, even engaging when the ghosts are not there is not that favorable, which this time around, his army is not lurker-based anymore. So if the tanks are by themselves, he can actually engage into it and take a good fight if the ghosts are out of position, like now. The, the ghosts are not here, he can pick off a couple of tanks, Get a good blinding cloud on the siege tanks and then back off. Still losing a lot of zerglings there. Oh my god, blue flame helmets are so insane against zerglings. 
He used the knight there as a bit of a force field to make sure that the, the ghost couldn't come around. I think the plan there was to maybe try and still get that planetary, but this ended up being a pretty poor fight for Dark. For the people that are not aware, Blue Flame Hellions with or Hellbats with plus three do one-shot links uh, with all their splash as well. So any link that gets even close to a Hellbat will basically just disappear. So this is why it's so surprising to see uh, Dark have such high numbers of links because technically tanks should never be by themselves if the, if tanks are by themselves at least have three or four helmets nearby and just like that that position is completely safe if your opponent is working with pure link yeah the question is what does he do like against this army what does he do the only thing that can't theoretically trade at all are brute lords so i think he's just trying to use the mobility to his advantage which i think is the only call he can make uh, he doesn't even have enough gas to start any sort of transition so once again he's going in with the zerglings decent split gets the Hellbats and also picks off a bunch of tanks. At this time, Maru is way further out of position. This is exactly what Dark needed. The supply is looking very grim already, but this is like the best that he could do with this type of army. This is like just 90 army supply worth of Zerg, actually killing the factories as well, killing a lot of the tanks. Maru realizes there is no detection, so he runs forward, getting some of the Hydras, gets the Lurker as well for free. But this this type of move is what he needs to do and what uh, he kind of needed a little bit earlier. Yeah, because right now the position is still looking real grim for him. 64 army supply, no gas in the bank whatsoever. That means it's going to be pure Ling, except there's no larva either because there's just two queens on the map. They're busy spreading creep. Yes, there are seven hatcheries total, or six hatcheries, one hive, uh, but that's not enough to produce as many Lings as he needs. He, he can't even max out right now. Yeah, no, it's... <laughs> It's a very grim position. I mean, he hopes that Maru is not maxed out or something. He gets the planet. This is the most important part of the map right now for Maru. He catches a lot of siege tanks as well. His Zergling Micro is really good. Splitting them up on top of the siege tanks, getting a lot of them, getting the planetary. He's doing all the right moves, but the issue is that he's just behind. If he does this in a game where he's ahead, these moves will win him the game. These are fantastic moves. Like he, It's exactly what he needs. It's the only thing he can do. He can't take a straight-up army engagement, so he picks off the tanks when they're by themselves. He even takes out mining bases from Maru consistently. It's just, he doesn't have enough. And Maru takes the 3-1 lead in the grand finals here. Wow. After 30 minutes, and Maru puts himself on, uh, on match point. Man. That's quite the uh, quite the video game, though. I kind of have to say, quite the video game. It it really feels like Dark was very far behind from the very start, but then at some point you start to believe again. I think after that fight in the middle, where he traded so well with all those roaches, I'm like, ah, eh, you know, maybe maybe it's possible. But uh, yeah, Maru just too good at camping, sitting back. Eventually gets those hellbats, and it all just falls apart. Was there any key moment where it felt like okay? This is where it went wrong. Perhaps the lurker attack was it was a bit too much. The lurker attack in the bottom. I think at that point already he's in a terrible position because if you have twenty lurkers against like fourteen tanks plus fifteen plus ghosts, there 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 should be no weak spot. Like you can split the tanks and you no matter where you're gonna run into, you're gonna run into at least six tanks at the same time. So you're gonna lose so many lurkers in the approach, no matter what he does. So I think at that point already. The plan has to be to never engage and mine out and go into Brute Lords. I think that's one of the only plays you can do, really, because you're never going to trade out the Lurkers effectively, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to be that way. Very frustrating, of course, here for the man in the bottom right spawning as our blue player. It is dark. He just lost his map. It's altitude known as the best Zerg map currently in the pool. Mm-hmm. And his opponent, wait, did you just announce Dark? Yeah, yeah <laughs> you did, did right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, his opponent in the top left, it is Team Onside's Maru on match point. Indeed. Indeed, it is. And now we're on Babylon. Now, if you were to rate Babylon compared to Altitude, okay, well, why, why is Altitude such a good map for, for Zerg? And why is Babylon such a good map for Town? Could you explain it? Yeah, so. Uh, um, altitude is generally a very large map. Large rush distances always favor the Zergs because we can get out more drones because we're the defensive race, so we can get more drones out before the attack hits. Let's say altitude is 10 seconds longer or let's say 15 seconds longer uh, from a tank push. That, that equals a large amount of drones. Um, let's say 20 extra drones against like a three, three base tank timing, which makes a huge difference 
in and of itself. Basically, it allows you to make more mistakes and be fine with it, but also the map layout in general. We could see that Maru had trouble defending all of his bases at the same time. If we compare this to Neo Humanity or let, let's say a Grass Run, for example, you, you don't need to defend that many locations at once and it becomes a lot easier to rotate your army around as the defender, which is Terran in the later stages of the game. So, yeah, in general, large maps favor Zerg early on and then maps that the bases go far apart um, also favors Zerg later on in the game, and Altitude has both of those characteristics. Whereas Babylon is basically just a short map. Uh, I think it's probably the best out of the five maps, by a very small margin, but it's just a very short rush distance. Uh, as Maru finally mixes it up, he's trying to go for the Overlord Snipe, but Dark not going for it. Maru did this in the last three games he played on Babylon, so I am very surprised he's doing it again. I would have been extremely surprised if Dark fell for it as well. Uh, but he doesn't, so good play by Dark. All right. Good explanation there, Lambo. We all appreciate it very much. Yes, uh, yeah, this move didn't quite work. It's kind of build a blind bunker here. What is he scared of? Uh, the last time they played, uh, he did this exact opener, and Dark did a roach attack. And he, very, very frequently, if, like, I, I told you earlier, right? Whenever yeah. Dark loses an Overlord, <laughs> he throws on a Roach Warren and Aldens. So I think the Mar just kind of prepared for that blindly because he was expecting to kill an Overlord. Right. I like that. Good preparation here out of Maru, who is most likely going to follow this up with some type of 2 on 1 setup. Has the second barracks, has a factory that created a tech lab here, has a starport on the way. Could also open up with a tank, but it seems unlikely, right? Yeah. No, no, it's Banshee for sure. It's Banshee? I thought, well, what's the second barracks two, for two. then? Two, okay. Well, two on, two on one, the barracks would be earlier with them, and then the the factory would make a reactor. Of course. So this has to be a raven or a banshee. If it's a raven, I'd be happy. It's just a banshee. I'm, I'm <laughs> no, okay you're unhappy. It. No, okay. I'm okay with it. It just doesn't spark the same joy as a raven does for me. There's something special about the raven as a as a starting unit. It, it, truly, there's something beautiful about it. Dark opening up with uh, a link speed cancel here. Is that correct? Yeah, that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just going uh, gasless roach. I th like Dark, Dark did not actually scout the tech lab. If he did, I think cloakless banshee would make a lot of sense. But now he's just going for a cloakless banshee for safety, which I don't like as much. But he's he wants a two base all in anyways. So I I don't think no matter what you do in the early game, you're not gonna get that much damage done. So he just wants the safety initially, and then he already has a tech lab for the factory later on. And now he's going to go for a very committed two-base push. He did this already in the group stage, I think. Basically the exact same build on Babylon as well. Might have been against Solar. But he did this exact build and then pushed um, towards the fourth base and then from below the main base, basically, to, into the main base. And it looked really powerful. The thing is, Dark is just playing Roaches. So this is terrible against Roaches. Why is um, that? Well, because it's a two-base alone and Roaches is just the best defensive unit. Uh, against tank pushes in general. You should, you, against Roach, you basically never want to move out, but if you're two base alone, you have to. You you have to move out, exactly. Right, gotcha. Okay, Benji's still gonna get a couple of kills. Might end up falling, though. Yes, at the same time, Roach is hitting the other side. See the Marine count here. Slightly suspicious. Might be able to still get a bit of a trade going here, so there's no Stim quite yet. Stim will finish in 13 seconds, and it might be just a tiny tad harder for Dark to get an okay trade with these Roaches as he moves back in time. This was a big scout, right? This was a big scout. It was huge that he lost the Banshee, because the Banshee could have killed at least like four or five roaches on the mm. retreat. But uh, yeah, losing the Banshee is pretty bad. For Maru, who's now adding a 30C, and I think at this point he's just going to drop. I don't I don't think he should even do a frontal push. Even though that was his plan initially, obviously. I think he's just dead if he pushes. He's now just playing from behind, but that's better than attacking, and then you're completely dead. Gotcha. So I think, yeah. Double Evos coming down here as uh, Maru was just working off a single eBay, which is, of course, the standard with these type of uh, setups. Gonna get 1-1 one, one from just a single eBay, then perhaps add an armory and a second eBay if he can. Uh, once that third base ends up finishing up. We do have a bit of a move out here still with the tank, so not quite what you expected. This, this, yeah, is, I this is a mistake. I was or? hoping for, for it not to be more. Yeah, he's going back. Look at him. Okay. He's too smart. He, he actually, Maru is doing so many right calls 
even in the semifinals already against Cure, where he was miles behind, but he uh, has really good decision making overall. Like you, you can um, you can obviously see that Maru's micro and macro are the best of the best, but his decision making also is so solid. Yeah, definitely seems to be the case. It's, uh, it's very difficult to make these calls when you're playing, of course. It's much easier if you have full information as the observer to know exactly what you have to do. And with a player like Maru, it often indeed is the case that he just completely mirrors what a professional that has full vision uh, does, thinks is the correct play. So that is fairly yeah. impressive here. He's going to move out with four medivacs, a bunch of marines, and tries to make a play towards this fourth base. Might be capable of forcing a cancel here. He will get the cancel. Uh, Dark looks to be one on Rochelling again. I really would have preferred seeing him play Cave Bob, which was his style initially anyways, where you just rush Hive and Lurkers from from ahead as well. So th there's no there's no risk of dying basically ever. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would much prefer that, but he's going to try to attack again. Babylon is not the best map to attack because the tank can be... If you attack in between, there can be a tank on the high ground and the natural. And in general, it's not as big of a concave as there is on other maps. Now, if he's attacking at the same time as there's four medevacs sitting his main base while he's in position with the queens, that might be that might end up good for him, but the queens were not perfectly in position, so none of the medevacs die. To, uh, while Maru is flying into Darek's main base, not a clean unload though. Yeah, this is uh, a little bit sloppy by both players. Dark says, okay, that has been cleaned up. We're going to try once more. There's no tanks really on that top side, so it's going to be at least a lift up. Uh, the tank count is at four. One tank on the high ground, not quite siege up yet, though. Fifth tank also shows up now. I, I don't think that Dark can really engage into this, right? Can he? Well, he's trying from both sides. He has a really nice surround. The tanks at the top are super exposed. And the Marines are still in the medevacs. They're unloading one by one. The, med the SCVs are just blocking the Marines. And this was actually a really good engagement for Dark. I also thought that with what Maru had, I don't think Dark could have engaged into that. But he microed that really well. And he also jumped on it while still Marines were unloading. Which is huge. Because either you uh, stim all the Marines multiple times or... You, like you, theoretically, you need to stim them one by one while they're unloading, which is obviously impossible to do in a situation like this. The SCVs also weren't perfectly micro, so I think Dark now has a big lead. Yeah, it does seem to be that way. Dark containing his opponent on two bases as he gets his own fort. His 71 worker, so already a higher worker count than he had in the first 18 minute last game. Uh, 2 2 is on the way. Hive coming in. Third Evo Chamber is also preparing for a potential melee unit switch. Uh, that could be just for banelings, could, you, could could be for ultras as well. We don't really see that so much anymore, no? Like these fast ultras, off of roach openers. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it has become very uncommon because just usually transitioning into lurkers is better. Also, if you go Ravager Link Bane, you can just... You usually just use Ravager Bane Viper at first. Mm. But it still is a thing. It still is a thing. It's decent against tank... Uh, tank-based bio. But if they go into, in, into Widow Mines, the army falls off very fast. Huh. Double snipes there, though. Uh, both bases do get taken out, so that that, that will help uh, Maru a little bit. Don't forget, those were well the fourth and the fifth. So during this, Dark has been mining off of three bases, while well, Maru was on two base. Uh, it seems like Dark wants to try something else with these roaches, or maybe just wants to lose a couple of roaches to get units that actually do something, like infestors, a couple of links in here as well. We do have the melee upgrade coming in as well. What do you think of adding Vipers at this point, by the way? Yeah, I think it's necessary. Uh, he doesn't really... I mean, he has the gas now, he doesn't have the supply for it. I would have actually preferred seeing Vipers before the Zerglings, and now he gets the Vipers. As he loses a couple more Roaches. So, Dark agrees and also adds in the extra Vipers. He actually will get plus two carry pace before Maru will get plus two attack, so that would have been a prime time to attack and trade out some of the units. But for now, Maru is just making it hard for him to know where exactly to split his army. Because he keeps moving out with these safe move-outs, you know, he always moves out with as many units as he can pick up. Mm -hmm. And then... Leaves the tanks at home. Says, okay, I'm, I'm safe with the tanks at home, I'm just trading away my units here. Whenever a fight is unfavorable for me, I just pick up. And that's, I think, very good in general against... Um, Anti-airless styles, I'm gonna call it from Zerg. Yeah, I like that. Two investors in the main base, not entirely sure why, but... That is where they're currently located. With Parasitic Bomb, of course, that type of style isn't quite as viable anymore. It doesn't necessarily 
insta kill the med effects but it does damage them over time so you need to be a lot more careful as a terran at those moments 14 banelings are being morphed in centrifugal hooks just finishes now there's no link speed quite yet though can dark engage into it he thinks yes as well he kind of needs to no he no, i think he counter, base counter attack you, yeah give up the base counter attack 100 percent correct bro there is no way he was going to engage into that without zergling speed He's waiting for his upgrades to be done, and now he can slowly whittle away at the army while he's counterattacking with his Zerglings. It's still now a four base versus two base scenario because he basically disables Maru's own third base while he's expanding towards the top again. So I think basically the perfect call there uh, from Dark. I think Maru could keep going oh, forward there with the Vikings. Oh my god. I, I didn't even look at that anymore because, well, usually Zerglings don't kill an orbital. What? That is a that is a, a significant blunder here that makes this way more all in than it ever should have been. A hundred percent. The Vikings will find one of the Vipers before a single blinding cloud will land. The army is still looking really, really good for Maru. We're looking at a very road ravager heavy army from for Dark. Dark, I don't think this is the moment you wanna start three upgrades. Are you kidding me? He's starting three, three, two upgrades. You need all of that in your remax right now for the army, for the additional army. Dark seems so confident in the fact that he can hold this, he runs forward. Throws in a couple of crucibites, kills some tanks, goes back again. I mean, he's running out of money. And his army is still looking inferior to the one of Maru. Come now, in. once again, trying to engage. Decent fungus on the medevacs. Kills a lot of medevacs, actually. He should cancel those upgrades. Yeah. Well, he doesn't actually have the larva either. He's only on a single larva currently. What are the queens doing? Well, there's just one queen. So I guess that's what they're doing. It doesn't really matter if there's just one queen. Uh, more tanks are in production. I wouldn't mind seeing a couple of links from behind to make sure that the reinforcements don't quite arrive here. Maybe a bunch of roaches there as well, as Maru's trickling units across the map right now. But every tank that gets added into this is going to make it harder to break. Um, Evo's now being taken out as Ravagers move forward. We'll take out two tanks. That was a very big move that hardly cost anything there for Dark. Yeah, that was super important for him. At this point, it's just tanks sieging forward one by one, which Ravagers are so good against. This is why I said I don't want him to push with two base against the Roach Ravager, because every time you siege forward, you're going to lose a couple of your siege tanks. And even with three upgrades on the way against a two base all in, uh, Dark holds it with flying colors, honestly. It didn't even look close in the end. Uh, even though he was even army with the Roach Ravager against a um, basically maxed out Marine Marauder tank. Of course, he somehow managed to clear it up quite nicely. Truly the master of Infestor Ravager, who gets wow. a little closer. Yeah. And in a way, this actually shows that Terran late game is very overpowered. Because Dark in that situation was on five bases versus two base, up in upgrades. And he was being all in, yet he was more afraid of the Terran late game than he was of the current push. Yeah. <laughs> like this... In a way, this shows that at least Dark truly believes that the power of Terran comes in the late game. It might be. I mean, yeah. I, what are the chances he thought the orbital lifted? Because sometimes I have this when I kill an orbital and I'm like... In my mind, it's, an, it's not even a possibility that the orbital dies. So even if I see it, I'm like, okay, maybe he lifts it towards the main base or something. <laughs> maybe... The I mean, it, it shows the same on the minimap, right? Because if there, yeah. if a building is lifted, you don't see it on the minimap. It doesn't stay lifted in the in the fog of war. So it, it is possible that Dark wasn't quite aware. But at the same time, I feel like Dark would have sent 10 links across the map to kill SCVs yeah, on the turret in that that's case, 100%. Like, that's the most Dark move I've seen in my life. Um, he, he just continued expanding towards the top, though, which is really sick. Absolutely. Yeah, fantastic play. And he plays exciting StarCraft 2 as well. He really does. <laughs> exciting StarCraft 2. Now we're heading into uh, into Grassfan, Lambo. Oh, there's a high potential for a banger late game as well. And why is that? Because this is the easiest late game map ever. You secure six spaces with one and a half entrances. Yeah, it's gonna be rough here for the man in the top left, spawning as the blue Zerg. It's dark. And his opponent in the bottom right, once again starting with a low ground depot. It is on sides, Maru. Still on match point. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you so mean to die? Come on, man. <laughs> I don't you know. Have I, to I, give I, don't, as well. I can't control the audience. This is just what they do. Unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I just go ham. The moment they Sick see a Terran Slayer. Yeah. 
the Korean fan base seems to be very they they like their GOM TVT. Yeah, they really do. I have no influence over them. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a two racks, three racks, two racks, two racks. So this is the map where he three racks me on. So if he does it, maybe it's this one. But um, I mean, yeah, it failed. The thing is, Dyke didn't go for fast speed a single game after the first game of the series. So if I was Maru's coach, I would go to him and I would tell him go three racks Reaper and take a free one, one lap. Uh, he's not doing it though. He's just going to two racks once again. I mean, he also destroyed him the first two games with the Widow Mind drop into a double medevac drop. So maybe this is a good time to go back to it. It seems like a solid standard game. And I mean, the last game, his early game was pretty bad, to be honest. It was it's very, very bad for Maru. So maybe he thinks, okay, if I just play normal, I can play another late game and win that way. I like it. Crescent is a fantastic map, as we mentioned before. Um, let, let's do the base counting. You know, this is, you have the natural, then you have the third, you have the fourth. You can take the fourth in two locations as well. You kind of take the forward forward, you know, to really secure that position. Or you can take like the three o'clock. That's also fine. Then you can take the other one as the fifth and then the top base, which I guess is the two o'clock. Yeah, somewhere mm -hmm. around two o'clock as the sixth. And there's really only two entrances. You can wall the entrance near the third as well. And you can shoot from the forward forward location down towards the third so the defensive setup on this map is freaking bananas yeah you you can also put a sensor tower to the forward fourth location and you see all the rotations so you like you can never be out of position on this map it's just not possible <laughs> like you can't that, that sensor tower you, it can't be killed because it's next to a planetary and a tank and uh yeah I, I, i'm not quite sure what to do about it man dark went creature in the main again I think he's gonna lose at least one queen here. We'll see how good the Reaper Micro is. I think he might even lose the hatch. This is what I'm saying. Like, if I was, at the very least, if I was Maru's coach, and I'm not sure if he has Ryang there, I think they're in the same team now, so he should really give him advice. If I was his coach, I would have told him to not go into the natural and just kill the third hatch. Because it's a free kill, 100% the way Dark plays. Even now, it's still, like, he's, he's gonna have to lose some units in order to defend it. Oh, and he still has the threat to the main or to the natural as well. That's kind of huge. There is a queen over there. Couple of drones in trouble. That's one. Target fire here wasn't perfect. Is there a single queen in the main? No, no, no there's no, not. No, it can't be. Yeah. Oh my god. This is yeah, this is can, not it for dark, is it? No, it's not. You can't have for all oh, one of the reapers went the wrong way around. So he gets one of the reapers for free, which means the reapers don't two shot anymore. And instantly it falls apart. But still, it forced a lot of zerglings. The queens went off creep, which also means they didn't spread creep. Like th this, this is something that uh, might not be so obvious, but because the queens need to run towards the third base to save it, there's not a single creep tumor being spread. Like now he starts triple tu tumor at his natural, but it obviously is way worse creep spread than it should be in a normal game. Yeah, that might not be obvious to the average viewer, but I already thought of that, of course. Don't worry, Lambo. I see. Yeah, that I was actually the first thought that Saying popped in my head. For, for, for the audience, uh, <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, yeah. not for you. But for me, I looked at that thought and myself, ooh. That's really gonna hurt his creep spread. I wasn't thinking, oh, that's drone kills. That's the, like the amateur way to look at it. It's like, oh, drone kills, direct damage. No, <laughs> my mind immediately goes to like, what is the indirect damage here? And I'm just thinking, think like, 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 like creep spread, but also just maybe a, a, a delay there on the injects. You know, that could be detrimental later on in the game. You know, so these are just the things. You know, always looking to the future rather than you know staying in the present. It's very important in StarCraft too. But I'm glad you pointed it out anyway. Yeah, no, no problem. I got you. I'm sure you would have said the same anyways a couple seconds later as uh, Dark actually went in for the scout, saw that it was Cloak Banshee. So Maru now cancels it and I fully expect him to instantly lift the the starboard. Change it with the factory going for double medevac pressure right after. I really think he should have left a couple marines there though. Because if the Overlord re-scouts, he knows what's up. Dark is going triple spore and roach barn, which is really not good in this scenario. I mean, you, you can force a late game, but you don't really want to force a late game on this map. If he went mute this game, I think it would have would been really good, as uh, we already saw him do against Gumio on this map as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do think so too. I like Muras in general as well. I think it's a fun unit to watch. Yeah. I never really hear Terrence complain about it anymore, though. I feel like back I in the day, people <laughs> never really hated it. the Muta. Now there's there's like one Terran worldwide that doesn't like the Muta and that spirit. Everyone else is very happy playing against it. 
I think we're at that point where even Spirit doesn't mind anymore playing against Mirrors. Which means then the unit really must not be that good. <laughs> it was really suck then. We have nine roaches on the way for dark upgrades. Haven't quite started yet, except Lyo Reconstitution. And uh, Maru is now making his way across the map. Has a single bench. He actually denying quite a couple of creep tumors on that right side. Pretty makes you wonder how far the creep could have been had that Reaper move in earlier didn't, you know? Pull so much time away from this Queens. There's no fort. Oh, actually, no, there is a fort base now uh, for Dark on the way. More and more creep here is being denied on the bottom side. And we do get a double pickup. I really like the way that Maru. Like, that Maru never really tries to engage into these roaches. He wants his Medivex to stay very healthy. He wants his Marines to always be capable of jumping into action immediately. And he wants to just clear creep. That is his goal for now. Clear creep. If he can get a base, that's great. But the moment he sees the roaches, he picks up boost out and rotate somewhere else or rotates to a, a position he was in earlier yeah i think the creep towards the very bottom is the most useless position for him to uh, spread creep on but to be honest i don't think he even wants to attack at all this game so just containing it in general everywhere is nice um i think it's not the highest priority this game i i'm kind of expecting duck to go ultras this game to be honest he's going ravager ling bane Maybe a Viper timing first and then into Ultras is something that I could see here. Nine Overlords being produced at the same time as Dark was uh, slowly but surely stuck. Well, it wasn't slowly stuck. He was very stuck here at 130 out of 130. You know what makes me kind of sad? Because we've seen so many Roach openers that we haven't seen the classic triple hatch in main yet out of Dark. Uh, I don't think a single time in this series, have we? Yeah, he played Purling Bane on Dragon Skates, but he was so poor there that he'd never, never get his triple hatch start. He's, he might do it now, no? He's playing Ling Bane focused. He already has one extra macro hatch start. Maybe yeah. next round soon. We'll see. We'll keep, we'll keep an eye on it for sure as uh, Maru continues uh, clearing a lot of creep. If he could find that bottom side base, it's going to get a cancel on that, right? That, that does, not, does not have enough HP quite yet. Upgrades on the Marines are 1-1 one, one as well, and this should be good enough. Yeah, it's going to boost there now. Uh, Roaches will not quite be in position. There's no Ling Bane in position either. We don't have a full Spore Wall quite in the main for our good friend Dark yet. Um, but units are moving over, so these Marines should not be capable of getting anything done here. Yeah, that's a cancel on the base that you were talking about. Dark not being in position there. Could not have been, because he doesn't have Overlord Vision at the bottom of the map. And he's now starting the Vipers. He's even gonna maybe lose this hatchery. Dark realizes that's why he's A moving the drones. Um, so Maru decides to focus down seven of the workers. Still a very, very good, very successful drop. Maru actually expanding backwards to have the slightly safer forward base at first. It's less exposed, but it makes uh, it makes it harder to take the fifth base later on. Um, either way, already transitioning into ghosts and just maxing on on tanks. This is one thing that I said years ago and only Maru does it, is when he plays against Roach, he doesn't max out on the bio units. He constantly has tank production, and then before he maxes out, he already gets Ghost. So he doesn't need to trade away some of the supply mm -hmm. that is in Marines. Um, I think it's a very advanced move that only Maru... Uh, that, that Maru started doing already quite a while ago, that other turns haven't quite picked up on yet. Yeah, and that extra money that you have left, you can then start investing into command centers really quickly, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so someone asked in the in chat why this is a good meta map. It's not so much that this is a good meta map, but it is a good meta map because a lot of bases are um, bunched up, which means you can jump in between bases quite nicely. It's also not the fastest rush distance. It's decent for tank pushes, which makes it a worse meta map. But the reason we play Muta on this map is because late game is so hard. And with Muta, you can still get some stuff done. It's not that easy. It's not just two entrances because the Mutas can enter from everywhere. So it makes it possible for Zerg to force the Terran to misplit their army and whenever the Terran is uh, bunched up with their entire army and takes a fight against the Zerg's entire army the Terran is going to trade very effectively so usually the goal from the Zerg is to get the Terran out of position and then take a fight that way those Medivex will survive I believe and he still also gets a pickup on the hatchery so Good damage there from Maru, who's just messing CCs on his side of the map. And Dyke will need to start doing something soon, unless he wants to play a Brutalord game. Yeah. 
It's going to be a Viper push here initially, except it doesn't have the Vipers with it. So just have a Ravager Link Bane attack. There's so many tanks in position, reaching very far back. Ghost are here as well. Still looks like an honestly an okay-ish fight so far for Dark. This surprises me. Yeah, he, he kills a lot of the siege tanks. But I'm not sure that this was entirely efficient. I think it was very good though for what he had. I mean, the reason he didn't have the Vipers obviously because they just uh, parasitic bomb, so he needed to go back. Mm -hmm to regain that energy and now he, he has accepted the fact that this will be a brute lord game like there is no way he can kill maro i think there's so many extra cc's even if he blows up a cc it's just going to be replaced so that was his best chance at uh, destroying the army and now that the army survived uh, it's time to go into double spire and transition Nidus goes up in the main base i really feel like these uh, fake Nidus are not doing anything for dark because maro just never responds to them <laughs> yeah. Might be better if they're real Nidus's. He now loads up some, some Zerglings. Yeah, yeah. The, the you, one you thing... can feel that his heart is not in it, though. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. This is it's not It's still real annoying. Nidus. It's still annoying, but it's grass van, so. Yeah. I don't even know why Maru made three sensor towers. Honestly, it seems overkill. Maybe he's trying but to recreate the everything. logo of the Olympics. Ah, uh, sure. Then he needs to take uh, control of the center of the map still as well. Maybe so... does it slanted? Still possible. Maybe. Yeah, maybe he's trying to do the Audi sign as well. Is that is that multiple rows or is that just four? It's no, four it, circles. It, it, it's it's four in a in a row, but it's uh, one of them died now, so he's ah. perfectly set up. Yeah, he has a chance. Very nice. Greater Spire on the way on the side of Dark, so as you mentioned. Brute Lords are going to be the answer, and if there's one man that can make things happen with Brute Lords, then it is Dark. Well. Sarah also is pretty good with it. Sorry, huh? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think in this one specific scenario, I'm not even sure if uh, Dark might be on the same level as Sarah because Dark is really good in those scenarios. I think if I want to have someone play a late game from behind, I pick Dark over Sarah. If I want to have someone play a game from ahead in late game, I um, think I pick Sarah no matter the matchup. But Dark is really good, even in dire situations just knows how to get value out of his units, which is so difficult as Zerg sometimes. Got a couple of trades here on the top side as the Neural Parasite is on the way. Throws on a Hydra then as well, 62 more links. For now, those uh, greater Spires, mainly just researching things, or well, those Spires just researching things. But there's going to be the greater Spire or attack upgrades. Don't want to show up to uh, zero, 0 Brutes to a 3-3 three, three fight. It's not quite what you want. Now, one, one thing I noticed is that Maru tries to look for the Brutalord transition uh, in, in his games against me. And then the moment he realizes there's Brutalords, he pushes out. Because he doesn't actually make he doesn't make blind Thors like some other Terrans. Uh -huh. Instead, he tries to catch the Zerg during the transition and pushes into it. Um, in my games, I usually was ahead. So this was, this was uh, even harder for him to do, but he still did it. And in this game, he's in a fine position. So... The moment he realizes his opponent is not uh, remaxing on... You, you see the constant scans on the army, mm -hmm. on the minimap. Uh, the moment he realizes, okay, this doesn't look like a maxed out army anymore, he's going to start pushing. I think for now he really shouldn't push. And he's also not completely overextending with his army, right? He just stays off creep, fairly close to siege tank lines, and always goes back. Uh, but the moment he will realize there's a Broodlord swap, I think he's actually going to start pushing. The, the orbital count is actually surprisingly low, by the way. It felt like he was, you know, getting them so quick. Oh, hold that thought as we do have an engagement here. Hellbat, half plus three vehicle weapons, half the pre-Inferno igniter, or the blue flame, whatever you want to call it. As the ghost in the back do manage to stay alive. This was a good fight here for Maru, it feels like. Lost a bunch of units, but most of those units were fairly replaceable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to, to be entirely fair, these units are also replaceable for Dark. Uh, he might lose the base, but in the long run, this type of stuff is not that important. It's more important that he trades out his worthless units for better units. Like, all of the road travel, he needs to go uh, at some point. So, now that I realize, okay, Maru is, has a lot of stuff down there, he's going to try to sack this base while attacking the top side. So, how much does Maru have left over in the top is the question. There's a bunch of tanks, but the Link's doing a good job against those with the Adrenal, of course. Take him down at a rapid pace. I think that was four tanks that fell. The final one will remain. As uh, two planetaries might end up going down here. It's going to be real close with the one on the right side. 
Yeah, so there was just not enough firepower there for Dark to truly burst that down. Now, what I was going to say is that the orbital count is actually surprisingly low. There's only... Okay, there's six orbitals now. Very often on Grassland, we see Terrans go up to 11, 12, 13, 14 orbitals. Constant scans available, but also the ability to mule very quickly. That's not quite the case for Mario. It also means that losing bases and losing SCVs can be painful um, if he takes a, ends up taking a couple of bad trades. If you have infinite minerals with the mules, then that tends to not be quite as bad. And if you just temporarily have a base, you can mule it out real fast. Dark is looking for angles, though, still. Does not feel comfortable with his uh, with a transition into Broodlords quite yet. I think Dunk has a little bit of a timing here to do something because Maru kept scanning and he kept missing the Broodlords. Like he has no idea these Broodlords are here. Dark moved them back super far. So uh, now he sees them for the first time. I'm expecting Taurus instantly to start and also, yeah, he, he needs to avoid the Broodlords for a little bit for now. Yeah, he starts two Thors. That is kind of enough, as stupid as that sounds, for this uh, low amount of bootlords. Um, but eventually, if Dark keeps making more bootlords, Maru is now the one that needs to trade away parts of his army, because he is actually quite marine marauder heavy at this point. He has 20 marauders. Yeah, that's too many. And although marauders are ranged, they do not shoot up. It's too Wait, there's no Metafax on that left side army. Okay, four are going to show up now. Uh, there's a couple of ghosts in here. Bootlords are in position to deal with it. Infestor should be moving in as well. A fungal plus broodlord is always beautiful. Tanks are splashing on those broodlings on top of the own bio. As, uh, yeah, Maru really needs to get rid of some of those bad boys. The first two Thors are out right now. It's not enough against 12 broodlords. Thors are good, but not that good. I think this bottom side CC should get taken out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that was very opportunistic by Maru. I don't think he... He actually was hoping to... Like, if you get a planetary there, that's fine. But I think he was always fine with cancelling that. I think Dark has a really strong timing if he starts to push now. Now he's very high on the worker count. But it's 12 Broodlords against only 2 Thors. So if he just pokes an, an, in the bottom with Infestor Broodlord, I think he can take fantastic trades. He obviously doesn't see what we see. Like, if there's 6 Thors and he starts attacking at the bottom, he's going to look really stupid. Um, but Maru was maxed, so he couldn't produce extra Thors. Which is something that, as a Zerg player, you, ca you just cannot know. Yeah. But it would have been the perfect time for Dark to uh, start doing stuff with his army. Yeah, for now, Dark just respreading that creep, trying to take the 12 o'clock on the very top here. Will get cancelled immediately, so neither player gets that uh, kind of in-between base. I wouldn't entirely call it a neutral base, but we do often see it, uh, you know, shift hands there at base. Sometimes it belongs to the Terran, sometimes it belongs to the Zerg. So far, it belongs to no one quite yet. Fungal's trying to get in position here. One does hit a Thor as well. The Neuro is going to connect with one of these Thors. Might be capable of taking out a tank in the far back. As the Thor will also end up going down. Goes now moving forward with an EMP. Couple of snipes. One more Fungal. Does not quite reach though. There's no overshoot. There's no detection. This. There's only a spore on the left. So as long as he keeps the ghost towards the right side, the Broodlords can't do anything. There's only a single infestor left with a fungal, but he hits all of the ghosts. So now the Broodlords are trying to turn around. It's not fast enough. Ah, Dark is running out of units over here. It's just a couple of links engaging which are useless. As long as there's a single hellbat here, really good parasitic bomb. Gets a bunch of the Medivacs here. A lot of Medivacs still low HP as well. Maru needs to watch out to not get overconfident here with his army because he's starting to rally units across one at a time and he's not maxed out at this point yeah it's actually very far from being maxed out at this point 164 supply army supply of 100 there's a bunch of broodlords in the air we now see a hydra transition what's that all about hydras huh i think it's not not a bad call because there's no tanks left right there's two tanks left only and he's very maro like, like he, he's basically making thor hellbat ghost i think going into hydra bane against it is really really good i think it's basically a a perfect call from Dark here, because Maru's being so aggressive, like he's moving out on creep with his army, and his only real splash damage is two, two siege tanks. Like, Halbets are not that good against mass banings. They're really good against Zerglings, but they're not that good against mass banings. So if Maru keeps going here, I think Dark can actually take a decisive uh, army fight. Okay, Dark is going to decide to take out that top side planetary first, and will defend with the Broodlord Fungal. Okay, now pulls back. Believes that maybe he can fight. Here we go. Can Fungals connect here? Do we have enough energy for Neurals? I don't think so. Fungals are hitting in a big way. Broodlords dealing a good amount of damage. All Thors have now officially fallen. And I think this was a very good fight here for Dark. 
Yeah, it was a good fight, but he's not mining enough to uh, to make it worth it. Maru's still producing Taurus. He's not believing in this Hydra Bane at all. Not making any extra siege tanks. And at this point, Maru also has more bases. Once again, at this point, he is at 10 orbitals. So whenever he wants to, he can land new bases. So killing bases at this point is just not worth it anymore. For Like, Dark needs to win the army engagement. So he's trying to go for a very, uh, very expensive army. But he also then needs to win the fights a little bit harder even than he did just now. Because he's just running out of resources. He's never going to take this top base, and he's never going to take the bottom base. Which means he needs to trade effectively from this point out. Two more CCs on the way for Maru. Wants to probably try and uh, make an attempt. Make a play for that top base at some point. Try to saturate it. Get a couple of mules in there. Grab some of the gas. Meanwhile, Dark is trying to do the same thing on the bottom side. But Creep is not even close to connecting to it. Broodlords are far away, so it's once again going to get cancelled. Broodlord Infestor actually in a bit of an awkward position here. Needs to be careful that he isn't going to get EMP'd or sniped before the fight starts. There's no Overseer. I think that's going to cost the life of at least one Broody. Mm -hmm. Good final though. Gets one Ghost as well in return. There's one Overseer and one Spore. I really would like for him to make a couple more of those Overseers. The Liberator is now Siege on top, as there is basically no anti-air as well with Dark's army. These Liberators have free reign. The only anti-air he has is Fungal Growth at this point, as he's counter-attacking, he's taking out this planetary. But remember, there's many extra CCs where that came from. So, Dark, I think at this point, needs to return. Instead, he's trying to kill the economy entirely and somehow try to stay alive with a Brutal and Faster at home, which is a bold move, but maybe the right one, as he's actually taking out all of the extra CCs as well, as Maru is not lifting those. Those are in the way of Hydras, which even if they're lifting now, he can still take out. So Dark is saying, okay, I'm trying to take out all of your economy and then I want to win the army fight. If I at least win the army fight, I'm going to win this game because I'm not going to win it in the long run against 10 orbitals. Yeah, I do kind of like that. How many orbitals did we end up losing right now? Well, there's still nine remaining, so I guess one went down. That's not the highest number. Maru also decides it's time to come back here uh, as he's taken out two bases on the other side of the map. Now, you can just lift and land a different hatchery, so... This is not looking all that great for Dark right now. Still on 60 workers, only getting 800 minerals a minute. Has a powerful army, but is it powerful enough? 12 Infestors, 10 Broodlords, 14 Hydras, 15 Banelings, and a bunch of Lings. I, I feel like that Maru's army is, is large enough here to, to not get completely blasted. Yeah. Yeah, the, the big thing here is the bank of Maru. Dark needs some magic neurals, preferably EMPs on all the ghosts, and then during the fight he needs neurals on the toys that's that's basically his comic mechanic he's also massing and faster he realizes he needs either huge fungus or huge neurals it's it's the the way he's gonna win this game because he needs to destroy this fight like there's enough money in the bank to get like 60 more supply of maru easily by the time the fight is over probably even more so dark needs a decisive victory really good ling run by here as he realizes that two planetaries that are morphing are not done yet and he's trying to go forward. He's trying to get an EMP as well on the on the Infestors. Good zoning with the Infestors. He dodges the EMP with most of them, but it's just not that many Broodlords left. He's engaging now with the Hydras, with the Banelings. There's just no Broodlords left in the sky. The only thing that he has left are the Infestors, which just don't do anything by themselves. Even though he gets a bunch of Neurals, the Infestors will eventually fall. And I think this might be the end. And the seventh GSL of the machine. GG gets called as Maru wins the GSL Finals versus Dark after pulling off the Reverse Sweep versus Cure in the semis, ending in a beautiful late game fashion here against Dark as well. What a show, Lambo. Is this everything you wanted in life or is it more? It's a lot of a, a lot a lot of stuff that I wanted. I I, I would have preferred a game seven, I'm not gonna lie. I think these games were amazing. Uh, I'm so happy that we didn't get a TVT because there was a chance that Maru was going to get um, dark as well before our Q was going to get dark, and that would have been uh, scary, as, uh, scary as well. I'm, I'm really glad with this grand finals. Yeah, me too. What a show. All right. I, I think that's pretty much it. There is no Lambo. There's no winner ceremony here. I guess this wasn't live. No winner ceremony. No, nope. absolutely <laughs> not. But uh, yeah, it, that was really fun, honestly. Even the TVT was really good. Even the TVT. Yeah, the worst series was the first one. S By fire, significant yeah. amount. Definitely true. Will you still be streaming after this? I didn't hear what you said because I just got a bit donation for oh. the GS7 for Maru. Will you still be uh, streaming after this? 
No, absolutely not. My my voice is uh, starting to uh, have I cracks. Do. Okay, I'm done as well. So in that case, I'll see you later. Bye bye, Lambo. Bye bye. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Enjoy your birthday, mate. Thank you. That I will go do in indeed. All right, I'll be leaving the GSL studio. Yeah. Adios. Adios. And that was it, my dear friends. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm back. Wait, is there another way to do this? No, there's not. Well, I uh, appreciate all of you. I saw there was some more donations. I'll have a quick look at those as well. Thank you, Jason Freeman, for the $10. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you for another year of entertainment. I appreciate it. Thank you, Crispy GT, for another 149 in Australian dollars. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, we might do this again in the future. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, no, StarCraft 2 was made on, it was released on the 27th of July, a day before my birthday. Not on my birthday. No, I, I don't. I think StarCraft is not on my birthday. If I'm not mistaken, how old is StarCraft 2? It's 13 years. Came out on July 27, 2010. Yeah, I remembered it correctly. Of course I did. All right, I'm going to eat some cake. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.